So, <laughs> Stan, you're here to answer questions. Oh, man. I am so, But really, we're I, here to have a conversation. I actually have a question. Don't ask me the, about my shirt. The bell. Oh, the bell. Okay. <laughs> I'm not asking you about the shirt. My pimp sports shirt. <laughs> as we do a, mar- a happy uh, marriage. Uh, happy, happy marriage the, podcast look, episode. You've got and, your techniques with your woman, uh, okay. and I've got mine, okay? <laughs> Don't tell me so, how to do to, to raise my don't, girl. Don't you tell me how to do my marriage. My marriage. I tell you. I am very happy. Her? She told me I'm very happy. Jesus. She says I'm very happy. I am happy. <laughs> so so the bell. What the about bell. the bell? What you just The Bell the Bell is uh I, I stole this from Opie and Anthony. I don't know if you're familiar with that broadcast. Say no, you're a Christian preacher. Um Nope. Very good. Uh, so, so the bell is. This is the inappropriate bell. So anytime ah. I, I say something that I think will p- bring a tear to anyone's eyes, gotcha. Especially you, in today's world, ding. ding ding, and say, "Hey, we're just joking around." That here. you know that that could come in handy more often than you realize in today's world. Just like a you, sign saying, "I mean, you could really make a lot of people cry today." I hope so. But, well, we're gonna. We might. You know, there's it's a, possible. There's a. There's a. Uh, hold on. Wait. Before I even. I haven't even checked anything yet. I, I turned everything on, but I haven't checked. You better checked. check. Okay, that is say working. Say hey, say hey. That's working, and that's where... Okay, so we're good, and the live feed's obviously going. So. Beautiful. Do you have to clap three times again at Eric, or are you good? No, I'm good. Okay, I'm good right. there. So, so uh, I don't like to use a... I, I don't want to use a Christian catchphrase word here, but I'm going to have to, Uh-oh. and it's the word... I, I hope people are, are feeling... Uh, uplifted but convicted. That's the word. Convicted. Nice. And what does convicted mean, Pastor Stan? <laughs> does anybody call you Pastor Stan? That's I, creepy if they do. I, I get I get called Pastor all the time. That that's it's, up. That, well, you are in the South. I mean, I, I get called Pastor Pastor Stan. I tell people like that. Ah, Stan's fine. Yeah, like, and I I do. A lot of people will respect it, and they'll just say, okay, fine, I'll call you Stan. It's cool. But then, depending upon somebody's tradition, like their background. They will actually say, No, I, I can't. I can't I call can't. you I just can't call you that. It's it, not there's respectful. Gotta be a, yeah, there's gotta be a title with it of some kind. Um, and then I've got other buddies of mine in ministry. We'll we call each other and we make up a bunch of titles or sling like fifteen together and I got, just make you know, fun of each other. But, I I need a good oh really? Like what? Oh, is this the uh, Reverend Doctor Pastor? But like we just, you know, we just string a bunch of those titles together and just not, not, you know, is I, it holy his holy fatherness? Like we just make stuff. Up. I'm a I'm a black dude. I know people <laughs> go, "What are you?" They that's the number one question for. I'm black dude. <laughs> this uh, is the number one question you get. Number one question is, "What are you?" Um, <laughs> what are you? But I know you don't get that. I'm white, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I'm a black dude, so I got to ask you the question. Oh no. Are, do you ever, like, I don't know, in your, at night in front of a mirror, ever practice the black preacher technique? <laughs> My name is Stan Rada, and we're going to talk about some Jesus. You ever do that? You ever say Jesus? Uh, I, I have done that. Uh, it's not a frequent thing. No, it's not frequent. Uh, it's fun it was, though, isn't it? It's fun though. It was interesting because, um, my, my, uh, speaking and preaching professors in college actually said, however you speak Monday to Saturday is how you should speak on Sunday. Those were good teachers. So don't, don't be something you're not on Sunday morning. And so I try really hard to just be who I am all the time. And that comes, and you, you are genuine. I, I got to say, <laughs> I you try are to be, I try to be. When I first tattooed you, <laughs> I did, I did tattoo oh, Stan. Oh man. When I first Woo. tattooed Stan, um, this was like the first time I ever actually got to meet Stan, like uh, talk to him. Cause I'd see him on stage, you know? And the thing is, the thing about preachers behind is behind the scenes, I'm telling you, man, there, you can, you, there's a lot of preachers out there. Like for, Bre- I'll say Brett, now you don't have to co-sign on this. I know this. This is your job we're talking about here. So yeah, no, I'm don't not, say don't say a thing. I don't even know who you're talking about. Yeah, right they now. Th- plead the fifth. <laughs> I plead the fifth. Um, but but Brett's like that. Brett is Brett is like this guy who is incredible on stage, incredible speaker, and uh, great story. I mean, the guy has got it down to his science, and he's a great guy personally. I, I don't think I've broken through his like personal shell. So I, maybe I'm just talking out of turn. But he is a reserved gentleman. Like he is like a kind of like a he he doesn't talk a lot. He's not a chatty Kathy. But you would think he was 
up on stage. You, oh. on oh. the other hand, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. You're exactly what you're on stage is exactly how you are in 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 like normal speak. Oh yeah, which which is cool. I appreciate that. Which is cool. I I just don't feel like you sort of have to try to be a great speaker. You just are. It's just part of your personality. Oh. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I need you to say something angry and 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 I, adver- How dare you? I, I don't. It's just disgusting that I come all the way over here and in you the snow typecast and, me and you and you totally stereotype me this way. I, you know what? I'm. I just I don't even know. So what are to you are you hitting are you hitting the mark then? Like hearing that does that make you go cool? I'm doing I'm I'm on the right track as far as preaching. Um. Yeah. I, I would much prefer to be just the a genuine guy who what you see on stage is what you get behind the scenes. I'm not saying Brett's to, not genuine. I, he, and he, Did you just I, hear what he you. just said about Brett? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fire him. I, I will walk out that door. I just saw uh, you. I saw you on a on a on a 35 foot ladder or something with your yeah. wife holding a coffee cup and I think your son <laughs> right. Yeah. And your son had both. That's... Your son had both hands free, but one was in a in his in his hoodie pocket. Uh, yeah, it was that was fun. Were they shaking it out? It, a little bit, Jeez. yeah, a little bit. So you know, yes, yeah, so we've got these windows at the school where we meet, and they have to be covered with foam panels, or all the sun would come in and just blow out the room. So every week we climb a thirty foot extension. Oh, ladder. you do that every week. Every week. That's the first up and down. But you never took a picture of it. That was the first uh, I've time. I've done a few the other way, like to see set up from up there, but I've never, <laughs> that's the first time I've done a selfie from now 30 you, feet in the air. See, now you learn something right there, or I learned something. If you're going to do something dangerous, always bring the camera phone with you. <laughs> it's the camera's with me anyway. It's not interesting any other, I didn't even no. realize you 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 did that yeah. until Every I saw week. that. And Every I go, week. wow, that's a long way down, bro. Every week. Yeah, carry two foam panels up there. They're what four by eight, roughly four by sevens. Okay, so classroom in the windows. So if we were to if we were to take if we were to take what you do right and and analogize it for the military, you're the general of of Linton Hall New Life. Okay, right. the church. You're you're there the general. You why is the general doing uh, private pile duties? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, why are you going to you got to uh, preach in like ten minutes and you're up there. <laughs> Well, um, I'm running into a situation where I seem to be one of the only guys I know that is totally comfortable being up that high with, with foam panels. Uh, You're that kind of white guy? Or, uh, oh yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's no I love deal. white people, it's man. No big deal. If it wasn't for Just white, up there. If it wasn't for white people, we'd have no idea what the bottom of the ocean looked like. <laughs> we'd have no idea what the <laughs> top of a mountain looked like. <laughs> white people so are the true. most That's crazy. Weird. They'll it's do the, the the weirdest things. The what, weirdest thing. Jumping things. out of airplane. Why are you yep. don't, jumping out? I don't... Yep. That's crazy. Uh, yes, that. And there are a few wives who are not big fans of their husbands going up there either. No, no. Which no. Uh, is actually an excellent segue. To? Your topic. My topic. The topic of I'm marriage. Not a, I'm, I'm here the asking... The topic at hand. Yes, the biggest issues, problems <laughs> in marriage. That the preacher man wants you to climb a thirty foot ladder, and now we need a divorce. Like it just it blows things up. Ha, has your you've been married for eighteen years plus? C- uh, coming up on eighteen. Coming up on eighteen. Almost okay. eighteen. So seventeen plus. You've been married. Yep. Married a long time. You look like you've not. You where did you get married in the nineteen fifties? You were young yeah. when you got married. Yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was almost twenty when I got married. Why'd you get married so young? Is because you're a Christian. <laughs> That's another one of those weird, uh, uh, stereotypical things us us Bible college people do. You get to Bible college, and the the pressure is if you don't get married by the time you're out, you're never going to be married, and the biological clock's ticking. And so there's all this pressure. It seems like in, in the uh, Bible college bubble to be there, get your degree, and find a spouse. My wife would call it the MRS degree. Marriage retardation. No, Mar- marriage. Mrs. Oh, mi- oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was just, I was trying to think. Well, you're, you're overthinking this. What one. kind of, what kind of acronym is this? Um, just your Mrs. Degree. Dante, like, da- Dante Nero has the exact opposite advice for young men. He says, "Don't get married until you're 35 because you don't even know mm. what you want in your 20s." What yeah. do you, what do you think about that? I, I definitely. Uh, 
I would encourage people to wait a little longer than I did. Yep, I would encourage that. Um, I don't know about 35. That also seems a little late. I, Dante I think, Nero was a stripper and a pimp, so <laughs> that could be why that's why he said why that. he said that. Yeah. I I'm not. I I don't know if there's a, like a, a specific ideal age, but 19 is probably not it. It's not a not the smartest time because because you're right you do you go you go up through your 20s you get back to like 29 30 you look back and go wow i didn't know this i didn't know this i didn't know this now i've grown in this role i've grown like you're, and, di- you're and, a different and, guy you're a totally different person you're a totally different person by the time you're 30 than than you were at 19 20 21 trying to graduate i married with a degree I married, totally different i got me and my wife i got married out of the military i was 23 years old and my wife was 21 and she uh consistently tells me you're not the guy i married <laughs> this is not the guy and it's usually during an argument so it's i don't think she's <laughs> i don't think it's a compliment but well and th- and this is where some of the marriage issues come up that's where a marriage issue will come up because you you change and you become somebody that they like like you're just now saying uh, you're not the person that i married it's you're different let me go ahead and let me. This is a good moment. I want to go ahead and do the official start of the show, which I haven't done yet, but good. That was a good kind Bring of it. beginning. So, guys, welcome to the Righteous Anger Podcast. This is, of course, the uh, we're in episode 41. And uh, that means our podcast uh, has passed cougardom. She's probably found herself a nice cabana boy to settle down with for a little while. Um, obviously, this is she's not married. She's, she's, <laughs> She's a divorcee, unfortunately. So if only she had listened. If only this podcast had listened to yeah, this come, podcast. Come out sooner. Come out sooner and, oh, and ask questions. Maybe got some counseling. I don't know. But uh, yeah, she's forty-one, and uh, we got Stan Roddy here because this podcast is going down the wrong road, and she needs to turn around and and better her life. So we got Stan here to help that. Oh now, yeah, yeah. Check it out, guys. We are happy. To say that we are actually, uh, uh, what do you call it, an affiliate sponsor of Onnit.com. So they have a lot of cool stuff. Um, basically to help your life become supercharged in, in good ways, right? So they've got products. Uh, I take the pill stuff. Uh, Brennan, who was here last week, actually took Onnit. What, are you getting some funny, the white? What? No, I, Brennan. Oh, yeah. I was, Bre- yeah. was going to make fun of Brennan, but. Hold, hold off on I'll that. hold off. Good. We do need to. We we'll do a whole segment on why uh, Brennan sucks. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love Brennan. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Check it out. Episode forty. Brennan. Brennan Loveless. Um, but yeah. So on it um, is a sponsor, and it would be awesome if you guys could try out some of their stuff. Go to the website righteousangerpodcast.com. Go to the uh, page, the front page, and there will be some stuff you can take it for thirty days. Uh, cash back. Uh, what do you call it? A, a, a cash back guarantee or. 30 day trial or whatever, send, you know, you don't have to send anything back. You just tell them, uh, give me my money back if it didn't work for you. They got Shroom Tech Sport, which uh, this is something you take 30 minutes before your workout. And uh, what it does is it opens up um, the, uh, the, um, your cells. Look, I'm not a science guy. So what, what this does is it actually gets <laughs> oxygen. This is why I need Eric. He's the science guy. Oxygen into your blood. It oxygenates your blood so you get more, um, energy and strength and and uh what's that word when you can go for longer stamina thank you helps your stamina so you got a hard workout stream shroom tech uh sport 30 minutes before your workout i also take new mood which is good uh, if you need to uh if you if you're in a crappy mood which i usually am i did name this the righteous anger podcast <laughs> it's it's telling it's very telling let me tell you but uh new mood you try you put that in your uh in your in your body and it levels out your serotonin, uh, so you you can be in a better place. Um, you got a, a sunny disposition, as opposed to a, a shady one like me. Mm-hmm. God, I need your help. I need your help, and I need Jesus. <laughs> That's the best way to say that name. Uh, okay. And then and then finally, you got uh, my favorite, my favorite Alpha Brain, which I have up here somewhere, but I'm not going to grab it. Um, mm. And Alpha Brain helps you with focus and memory. So if you guys need help, you're doing something like uh, getting ready for a podcast or something like uh, coding, which is what why I started taking it. It helped me learn how to code, bro. I can code now. I, I know. 
That's I mean, a, that's amazing. That's amazing because I'm a I'm a I'm a, a musician and an artist. There's no reason I should be able to code, but nope. I can. So, guys, nope. like I said, go to the uh, go to the website and click on that. Get yourself some of that stuff for 30 days. Try it out. If you don't like it on day 20, just tell them I didn't work. I need I want my money back, and you get it back. So you can't beat that deal. No. It's a better deal than you getting on this watching this thing. I'm not giving your money back for your time wasted listening to this drivel. No, I'm kidding. This is see, is this a better <laughs> setup for you? Well, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You're not gonna learn anything as as our numbers are going down. People yeah. are like leaving. People are backing out. They're like, yep, we're out. <sighs> no, I'm just kidding. Stan is actually gonna answer all the questions of life today. Tonight. All, the, all of them. So please, please all of them. But stick around. They gotta they've gotta leave some in the comments, otherwise I can't get to all of them. They better leave them. And, yeah, and thank you for mentioning. Yeah, please. If you're watching this thing and you have any questions about relationships, mind you, not, not even your marriage, but maybe you're thinking about getting married. Maybe you've been with your, your person for a while and you know, you're, you're running into some issues. Maybe you haven't run into issues, but guess what? You're gonna eventually, please, questions, concerns. Uh, maybe you think you have a better answer than Stan. That would be hilarious. I doubt it. <laughs> I dare you. I double dare you. Put your, I come up with a better answer than Stan comes up with. I'd love to read that. So anyway, without further ado, wow. we have the wonderful, the amazing, the bearded Stan Rada. Thanks, man. Stan, let's start off. Let's roll. Let's start off. I want to. I want to ask you the first question. I'm ready. Why should anyone get married? I think. Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, they, I didn't know you were starting there. Thanks, bud. You didn't prep me that on that one. Thanks, bud. Why should you get married? Um, I think, um, I, well, I think everybody should get married at some point. There are most, well, there are a lot of people personality-wise who are wired for marriage for sure. Um, what does that even mean? Well, there's some people that don't believe they are wired for marriage, so some people just stay away from it. Oh, I, right? see, I see what you're saying. I thought you said some people are wired for marriage. So, and some people would say, oh, yeah, I definitely need to be married someday. I think the, the biggest thing that comes from being married is, is community and friendship with another person. And so human beings, what we're, what we're discovering more and more about human beings, sociologists are discovering this, TED Talk people are discovering this, that, that human beings are, are made... Uh, however you think we got to the point that we're here, either made, created, designed, or evolved, whatever language you want to put there, humans are at a point where we are made for, we're made for community. We're made for other people. And what comes with marriage is, is community. Eric it's, would disagree. I'm, I'm sure he would. What's up, Ben <clears throat> Osterhaus? What's up, Jody Conklin? Yeah, Eric, what Eric would say, he'd go, um, yeah, I actually am not. It's funny too because he's been married and now he's in a relationship and he has kids. But, but he is the type of person who I think would be okay, not ever. Mar I don't think he's planning on ever marrying again. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of divorced people who say they're never getting married. It was the biggest mistake they've ever made. Right. And they believe that they can have that friendship and that community mm -hmm. outside of the bounds or handcuffs. Some would say. Mm -hmm. of being married sure it, you so mean, what you can get, they get more outside of what would you say to those people like how would you sway them oh my goodness well the part it's hard to sway outside of like my personal beliefs about why you should be married and so a lot of my personal beliefs get well let's talk get about wrap, your, get wrapped up into that you don't have to so, you don't have to speak for <laughs> anyone else except for yourself I'm speaking for myself so for okay. yourself what what is the reason I, I'm speaking for myself and um, I because God has designed us and made us who God oh we're gonna have a problem Eric right. Eric's gonna be he's gonna be texting me any minute like nope I, I can I can hear it it's all yeah, good it's I already can, but okay I, so so God God designed marriage. He and in in from my perspective, my opinion, my belief is that God made Adam and Eve. He created marriage. It is His thing. It is one of only a few things that God, in terms of relationships and in terms of of the world, that God considers sacred and is set apart in a very special way. And so, um, for me, I mean, again, there may be some people that are like, "Yeah, that's it's not for me." But my perspective is that um, that we are created for that kind of community, and it is done best and in the most healthy ways within 
within marriage. Now you're talking. Now you're talking. So my my whole thing, as far as Righteous Anger podcast, but also outside of Righteous Anger, right? me talking to people that aren't Christians, because that's who I talk to most, I'm always trying to figure out ways to get them to get it or get w- my logic behind things. Mm-hmm. Even let's say let's say you take God out of it. I know, right? At the at the very at the very base foundation, you can't you can't take God out of it. But right, I like to bring them about four or five steps um, above to where they can kind of forget about God for a second, and then I go, "Isn't this just logical? I mean, doesn't this just make sense?" So I try to I try to hit them. People that ask me questions, I try to hit them from a logical place first before even bringing God into it and saying, oh, yeah. oh, and by the way, the only reason this does make sense is, you know, God. So let's, let's, let's talk about that. Okay. So you get married because human beings need that are, that the way we're wired is that we need the community, but not just community. We need com, com commune. Uh, I don't know the right word, but we need to know somebody and intimacy? have intimate. We need an intimate community. An intimate yeah. community. You mean like uh, one of those? Uh... <laughs> wow! No, this no. this went a whole new direction. Yeah, no. <laughs> we could, we're talking to you too in those communities, but no, we're not talking about that. Um, there there is a certain intimacy within that relationship that you need for sure, and and that is it's partly a community thing. It's a companionship thing. It's a partner thing. We're in this together. I in many ways I view. I view marriage in many ways as as um, as a as a team sport kind of a thing. We're in this thing together. So there's, I mean, there's definitely intimacy knowing another human being more than any other person on the planet knows that person. You're in it with them. So there's community, uh, companionship, a partner, a teammate. Um, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of words like that that I could use. So before you get married, right? And, I, and I'm noticed. I mean, I'm hitting. I'm we're past our tenth year now. I'm I'm noticing that um, the uh, the thing I guess it blows me away is that the only person that I could have said knows me to the level that my wife knows me now um, would be my my mom my mom and my dad mm. right so and I mean you know it, hopefully you grew up with him with a mom and a dad of some kind right whether you're biological or foster or step right. or whatever but right. but that's that's a relationship where could you imagine existing without that relationship what kind of person comes out of a a, a place where you don't have people that care about you to such a level and are so committed to you that's another word yeah. that's one of those words where i start to throw in logic and yeah they're so committed to you yep. that they want to see you thrive. They want to see you have a good life because your lives are intertwined together. I mean, that's obviously that's, that's the best case scenario, right? With your spouse, right? right? Hopefully they're in that with you. Right. But, but I'm like, look at the, every, every year that goes by with, with my wife, I go, man, I, she knows me better than my parents. And they were the only people that knew me to any extent, yep. you know, better than anybody else. Now my wife knows me right. to that level. And I, I still fight with her. I still don't like her sometimes. <laughs> she hates me sometimes, but but even even through all the all, any fights that we may have, I can't I can't lie and say you don't know me. You know you don't know me. You don't know me. That's BS. You can't. Uh, I can't say that to her. You can't say that to her. Nope. It, it, I don't. You you can't. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, like <laughs> that, and that, and that's a good thing though, because yeah. If you open yourself up to that person to that level, you got you built something with that person, a life together with that person. Um, yeah, you you. Anyway, we'll we'll get into that. Okay, so so community building that intimate relationship, sure. Having sex without uh, making God cry, <laughs> the only way. Okay, right. Yep, God's tears sure. every time. <laughs> God's tears. So, what are some issues that that you see? Because you you actually help people, young people. Um, you do something called pre marriage counseling, mm-hmm. premarital counseling. Yep. And you kind of what do you lay you lay out all the issues that they might have, and do you do a long one or kind of a short one? Um, 
Yeah, so, uh, well, the way I do it is I just walk through a book um, that's called uh, Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. And so it's, it's, it's actually, it's a pretty simple book. Uh, it, there's seven chapters. It's, there's a, there's a workbook for the guy, for the girl. They can work through different topics. It's, it basically lays out the seven different, uh, topical areas where, uh, your marriage is gonna, is gonna hit some, some interesting, you know, bumps in the road and you need to be that these are you know it's designed to help kind of prepare you for those areas so it talks about um you know expectations uh talks about uh, that's a killer that's a marriage killer right if you're not if you're not clear on how the expectations especially going into it and then through it and updating as you go because as as you've already said you're not who you are from 25 to 35 to 45 to whatever and so as you go you have to learn how to update those expectations and be together as you walk through that. And we're right? not, we're not even, and we're not even talking about like the fact that I'm fatter now than I was. I used to be sexy, right? Of and, course. And yeah. and yeah, of course you can yeah, see I'm, it. Yeah. You can, I can see, I can see, right. Can, yeah. I can extrapolate back. Exactly. So I used to be sexy, but that's not even the part she cares about. Women are hilarious. The men are, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 shallow bastards, right? <laughs> and the thing is, women, women tend to never be as shallow as us. Like we get fat, yeah. and they they're you know for the most part they're like oh he's fatter now, but but. And the thing is, it wasn't my appearance that changed that she doesn't like. The things that she doesn't like about me that changed is I'm not as nice to her. Um, I'm I've got less patience, you know, with her. Well, you need to work on that. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, hey, that's what we're, that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> um, you know, there we don't right. we don't we don't. Um, there's not that like, what do you call it? That that uh, giddiness, that excitement, that oh that, sure. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, and not just like the cliche excitement, like oh oh oh, oh I'm just gonna talk to you for hours on the phone, and my 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 ears gonna get hot. From talking to you on the phone, this is back. Right, right. This is back in the day, people. For, <laughs> for the young people, we actually used to use this this plastic block called a telephone, and it would it would make your ear hot if you were on it for any length of time. Anyway, so you know these these are the things like just your your personality changes. You change like you are completely. I'm not talking about just looks. You are a different entity than when you first got married. And it's either you're a better entity or you're a worse yeah. entity in a lot of different... It, it's so complicated, right? Like, Well, and, and life gets complicated too. You know, not, not only are you changing as you go, but life is also changing because somewhere in there when you get married, then all of a sudden there's these kids that show up and then there's this career thing that happens and then there's this, you know... I mean, all, all the chaos of life hits... And then in the midst of all the chaos of life, trying to pay the bills, trying to get settled, trying to do yada yada, trying to make the in-laws happy, then all of a sudden you're changing, and you've got a different opinion on this topic than you used to. Now you can't even agree on that topic anymore. Now you're fighting over that topic, and at the same time, you can't pay the bills, and they got this, and then this happens. And I mean, it's it's like there's there's a, there's so much that compounds, um, especially in the first few years of marriage, as you're kind of figuring those things out. So it's not just whoa, whoa. personality. First few years? Like well, first, what three years, four years? You you talking about there's, that? Yeah, well, I mean, there's different marks for everybody, but yeah, I mean, there's there's big learning curves at like that year three ish or so. There's another one around seven. They there's some I don't believe, cliche for seven. I don't believe in the seven year itch. That's it. I don't believe in that. I I and that's fine. I don't. It's, I'm fine I'm it's, with you on that. I don't believe in it just because from everyone that I've that I've come in contact with, it's been the three year itch. After three years, puppy love is pup, gone. Puppy, what? What's a puppy? Girl, you better you better get back in the. <laughs> uh, dude, you. Uh, be, I was about, uh, I was gonna do the okay. The, okay. I was gonna do nice. the girl one too. Okay, all right. Dude, you better uh, stop. You know, smelling so bad all the time. You got <laughs> you got to fart while we're in bed. Like, I'm trying to go to sleep, right. and you and you just cut right. cut a couple loose. And then you giggle and and put the sheet <laughs> over my head. Why are you gonna Dutch oven me, dude? You didn't Dutch oven me earlier. Yeah. Now you're Dutch ovening me. You know, the, the, you know, common problems, right, Stan? Common, common problems. Yeah. Common problems. Yeah, exactly. So, th so three to four years. Yeah, yeah. There, there's definitely this three to four year thing. So all I was saying was just to kind of tag along with you that not only are you developing and changing and growing into who you are, 
uh, especially from your 20s up through that 30 and 35, like you had mentioned earlier, maybe even on the high end of that, but up through 30 for sure, uh, you are developing who you are. So if you're already married and you have years under your belt, all those, all the chaos of life compounds with all these changes that are happening within each of you. And so part of that does speak to that, that part where you wake up one day and go, who, who are you again? Yeah, exactly. And why are you in my house? And how did we end up together? And then in, in our current in our current social climate, the way we think about it now, it's more of the um, it's the language of, well, I'm not sure if I married the right person now because clearly yes. you're not who I thought you yeah, were. Well, so now I'm not with the right person. I'm not with the right person, I'm which not. gives you the the out. The out. That's an easy out. That's an easy out. Oh, it, you, it's a simple out. As, you're not the right person. There's, as, there's another fish out there. As per this contract... <laughs> you have violated you are you are not in compliance with this contract so <laughs> right in subset 32 the <laughs> clause I, article 14, b yeah you, uh, paragraph 3 i mean it says right at the bottom that it, yeah. if you if you violate any of these yeah we're done and then people take that to heart and go and, 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 okay and that and that's kind of i'm being funny right but right. but there is a level of like betrayal that somebody feels when their expectations aren't met right and they go, this can never change. Because there's this like, either it's happening now or it never will, right? And they don't give people the, they don't give their spouse the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. And there's so much that goes into that. The, yeah. There's there's so much more that goes into that too, talking through. I mean, now, now you're tapping into, um, you know, the communication stuff that has to go into that. To, to be able to work your way through it. Because now you have to have the communication skills and the maturity to be able to actually talk through why are you different than you were three years ago? What's changed? And you have to actually be able to work through it as opposed to, and, and this is one of those things I struggle with, is just the idea that marriage is expendable. And because you're different now, I may not have the right person, so I can just scrap this and just move on to the next. And then... And what do they find? And it, Well, I mean... They, what do you think? What do you think people find when they when they go through divorce because of that issue? And there's a lot of reasons why people get divorced, but right. because you're not the person that I signed up for, they leave and they maybe they find another person. What inevitably happens then? I, well, I mean, inevitably they find the same thing because they take the they take whatever problem they had and what and the problems, quite frankly, that they brought to the marriage as well, and they just take those with them to the next, to the next, to the next, right. and then they look back and and then there's either the sense of there's either the sense of maturing of like looking back, going, okay, I actually see where I messed up. I probably made some mistakes. They can kind of mature through that, but I mean, they they definitely take those problems with them and. I mean, th that's at least what I what I see when I talk with people. It's kind of looking back, going, you know, I've had the conversation with people, you know, who say, um, "Yeah, I got got divorced. Biggest mistake of my life. Like walking through. I would do anything I could to try to avoid, you know, walking through that again." Well, well okay. So the divorce part or the leaving? <clears throat> well, that person? I'm sure. I'm sh well. I'm sure it's a combination of a whole bunch of things. The leaving of the person, the the legal issues, the the uh, the children that may have been involved. That now there's a there's a battle over. There's the 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 uh, the financial side of going through a divorce. There's a whole bunch of components to that, where it can be very easy for somebody on the other side now to go, man, that was. This was not worth what I thought it was going to be worth to go and find the right person. You, you know what I mean? Because you think, right? Like when you're in the middle of your sit whatever situation it is, right? Now, again, please let me let me throw in let me throw in my uh, footnotes here. There's situations where there's abuse. Yes. There's infidelity. There's you right. know there's a lot of right. issues where it's like okay there there's big problems. What we're seeing nowadays is there's a lot of divorce just because of what what we're talking about, which is you're not the right you're not the right the one anymore, right? Yeah. But what they find out is that wow, divorce is hard. Yep. I mean, just it the is hard. The process, the process of alone is hard. I got a buddy right now going through divorce because of infidelity, not his fault, by the way, her fault, which is crazy, and you know that it usually is the other way around. And I mean, the guy is spending a fortune with lawyers. And they're divvying things up, and they didn't have kids. That would have just made it even worse. I mean, it's it is a brutal process to have to go through. Um, you don't think about that when when you're in the middle of something, and, and uh, she's doing it again. Oh, I hate her, you know. And yeah. oh, he's he's a heartless whatever, and he's <laughs> he's never gonna change. Like you're, when you're in the middle of that, 
you're thinking divorce is going to be relief, but then you actually go, you can talk people on here. I'm sure we're going to have some viewers that have gone through divorce and, and I'm sure they're going to say, no, 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 it's not easy. Divorce sucks. It's, it is definitely not, uh, the easy way out, so to speak. And speaking of our people online, I want to go ahead and say, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading some of the comments right now. Travis, uh, Ludvigson. Hopefully I said that Ludvigson. right. Ludvigson. Ludvigson. Very, 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 uh, yeah. uh what would he call you it? You have to say it with authority. He's a Viking man. Yeah. Um, he says ear sweat too. Yeah. So he knows. He yeah. knows the struggles the back struggles. in the day. Um, Misty, our PD, says that we should get back to seven topics of premarital. Yeah. She. That's not. That's not right because I can't remember all seven. And so I don't like her throwing me under the bus like that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of marriage, <laughs> I yeah, was starting yeah, to remember Misty. all seven. Misty, we're about to have an, an intervention with you. Yeah, here we go. How dare you? Three, Air- three best ways to build marriage after ten to fifteen years, uh, and then uh, yeah, that was the other one. That was I guess that's I guess that's in the form of a question. How do you kind of build your marriage after? So I mean, we I mean we go wherever you want, man. This is your show. Uh, answer the, answer that question. Which one? The one you just said. How do you build? What is it? How do you build a marriage? After- oh yeah, her question. See, three best ways to build a marriage after ten. Okay, now I don't have like people love top three, top five, top, don't top they? three, top five. Just give me the Come give on. me the ones. Yep, just give me the three. <laughs> I'm an American. I'll do the three, and we'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, no, I I don't. I mean, I don't know that I have like a, a set of uh, list thing. You know, just ready to go for those those exact years. But based on the the time frame of somebody that's been married ten to fifteen years. Where where you're at at that point now with another human being is is simply you're not at you're you're well past the the puppy feelings you're well past the the three year or seven year itch I know you have a disagreement with that one but you're you're past those marks now and now it's now it's just about it's just the longevity, longevity. it's just you, it's, you're you're into longevity you're into commitment Stan help me you're into commitment at help, this point help me love this person. When the novelty yeah. is no longer the novelty, the novelty is the novelty no longer is worn there. Off. Yeah. She used to wear Daisy Dukes every day. <laughs> she used to wash my car. <laughs> he used to cook dinner for me. He mm. I don't know why I'm doing it in some kind of redneck. He, yeah, that it, it's funnier that, that, that way. A, that was a switch. Maybe I should is there a better let me No, I like it. Sorry, Redneck. I like it. That's all good. I like it. It's a good switch. It's all right. fun. All right. That's that's worth it. Speaking as redneck, right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, well, with that shirt on, I mean, you're speaking. (laughs) Pimp sports. Go to, go to epilogue shirts.com. Get your own pimp sports shirt. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. So you can't really give a top three, but can you give a one? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think at that point you're, you're really just into the, you're in it for the long haul. Now you're just, you're saying I'm committed to this person, whatever it takes, I'm going to, I'm going to do my part. I mean, if you've made it that long, what you've probably figured out is that marriage is a, is a, is a team sport. It's a two way street. Each of you are, are pulling each of you are doing certain things to get to where you need to go. Now, if you're looking for like, Hey, we're, you know, we're 15, 20 years in, whatever, and things aren't so great. We need some actual stuff. Okay. Maybe there's a, maybe there's something we could talk about there. But I mean, if you're just kind of rolling, you're just like, man, how do we kind of keep building this thing? I mean, you're, you're really just building on a foundation of commitment and trust where the, the two of you are just in it together now for the long haul. So you, you've, you've learned each other's personality quirks. You've figured out the, you know, why can't the underwear hit the hamper? How come they always land two feet from the hamper and the towels and oh, you know what all these little I'm gonna, quirks. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a quick uh story. It's not even a story, it's so short. But there is a guy, not a Christian, all right, very, very much not a Christian, but he gave me some advice that absolutely, absolutely tracks, you know, biblically, right? He told me a quick story about this. So he, cause I was, I was, uh, you know, asking him cause he's been married for a long time with a, with a lady and I go, dude, you've been married a long time. Um, what if your wife opens doors and cabinet things, but never closes them ever. Right. <laughs> not, not that this is actually a thing uh. I deal with every day, but let's say that, that, that this is something somebody deals with every day. What, what do you do? And he goes, Dude, I don't, I don't, I don't tell her about it. Like if she leaves her, un- apparently his wife will leave clothes in the sh- after the, like in the bathroom after the shower, and she'll just leave the clothes there. 
And what he goes, what he says is, dude, I just pick up the clothes and I put it in the hamper and I never mentioned it to her. Yeah. And I've never mentioned it for however many years they've been, 20 years they've been together. Yep. He's, that's his thing. Pick he, a battle, man. He picks up her clothes. He doesn't go, hey, woman, your clothes are on the ground and just leaves them there for her yeah. to find, which is something I would do. I'm not the most mature, I must say. But but he says, no, I just I pick up her clothes and I put yeah. it in the hamper. I do that with ev- everything that somebody would look at and go, that's annoying. She needs to change. If yeah. it's if it's something that's not like, you know, impacting him, right. like in a in a you know, the marriage in a bad way. Sure. That's not a thing that you fight over. Yeah. Pick up the the darn clothes. Yeah. So I did uh, that I did that for I did that for you. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, all right. I wanted to curse. Yeah, well. Um so so good advice there. He leaves the ego at the door and he just picks up the clothes, right? Yeah. One of the things uh, to think about some language uh, I've used before and I I forget where I picked it up but was the idea of uh whenever you're dealing with with people or situations or whatever in life trying to determine whether or not something is a cold or a cancer. Uh, you know, cancer needs to be rooted out with heavy medication and treatments and, you know, all kinds of things. The cold is probably going to go away on its own eventually. So you let some of those things go. Something like the clothes on the floor or a cabinet door open, that that's a cold. That is real in terms, in the overall scheme of your marriage and life, that's not the battleground that you want to pick. You know, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So like just determining whether something's a cold or a cancer. The other thing goes back to something I had uh, talked about with my wife on, on my podcast some time ago. Um, Stanrada.com. Stanrada.com. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, was this idea of um, watering the grass in your own backyard and not looking at how the grass is greener over there. Well, it seems like those people over there have it all together. That marriage seems to, instead of looking at that, it's kind of getting back home, watering your own backyard. So this, the idea of the 10 to 15, the 20-year marriage thing, not only is the commitment to longevity, the long haul, but it's just that continual, constant investment in another, in another human being so that your, your grass in your backyard is, is green and, and you come home and yeah, you know, you've got a solid marriage. So it's it's a continual investment in another person. Right. Is right. really what it is. And and work. That's the number one thing. Oh, I, I it's, tell, it's it's definitely work. <laughs> Absolutely. I tell young people, I go, God, I used to be a young person, by the way. That I hate it that now that I <laughs> that I say young people, like I'm not one anymore. Um everybody not like within two years of me, uh, you're young. <laughs> <laughs> no, it used to be that. Now now I'm le- legitimately an old guy. I got like white. I got white hair in my beard. It's disgusting. Oh, it looks great. Um, thank you. Looks thank good. You. I try to George Clooney it up, but yeah, uh, it looks good. So I tell him, I say, look, you you go into marriage, you think that that this person's always going to do the right thing, but actually, marriages that last are are the ones where both people, both people, mind you, yeah. this this is another thing, both people are willing to work. Yeah. If you and, and it's just, and I look at it just like working out. Like you want you want six pack abs. It, going into marriage and expecting a great marriage is like wanting six pack abs, but still eating donuts and never working out. Like it's not going to happen, man. You got to work out, and people understand the workout analogy. Yep, because it makes sense. But they but they still have an issue with, yeah. But they're still not the right person because they're not doing X, Y, and Z for me. And 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 I, I I disagree with that at a fundamental. I mean, just at a foundational fundamental level, I disagree with that. Oh, I, we're, we're, it's not work. What, no, 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 it is work. What I meant was um, I, I disagree with the idea that if you don't put in the work that they're still the wrong person and I should move on because where where you invest and put time and energy, you grow to, to love those things. If, 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 you, if you're like the, the craziest sports fan out there, you invest in your team through <clears throat> buying you know season tickets or you're buying jerseys and you're and you're setting aside time to watch the game and you know the players and you're watching free agency and you're keeping track and you when you invest in that way you your heart feels like you are more you're more heavily invested there now now all of a sudden you care and that team is the right team and you can't hardly bring yourself to break it's 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 why you know I'm a Chiefs fan but it's why people out here in this area talk about the Redskins the way they do they feel heartbroken at the end of the season because they've invested so much in them and what do they do every year well I'll see you next year why because they've invested like everything is poured into that and there's no going away as hard as it is as much work as it is they just keep coming back because they've invested put in the time and energy the money the all the stuff to make that work that's that's it's that's a very 
that's pr- that's a, a very simple analogy picture of how the, the marriage works the same way. When when I invest in my wife at that kind of a level, time, energy, money, resource, effort, setting aside time intentionally for her, putting my time and energy toward her, investing in her, I make what. Oh man, I almost start preaching. Uh, I mean, <laughs> and then Jesus, <laughs> I, got, I got really close. I, mean, I was really close. Um, yeah, but whenever I do that, no, 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 she, no, 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 tell, tell your dude to get the pul- to push the pulpit out out of the door. We don't need we don't need that. <laughs> hey, get he's, the pulpit out. Hey, buddy, back it up. He's not going to start. I preaching. got my roadie bringing the pulpit in. Here. Back that out. <laughs> back get that back out. it out. <laughs> uh, but whenever I invest in my wife at that level, to to me, my wife becomes even more beautiful and more worthy of of my time and energy for her. And so it's. It's actually something where I end up benefiting in the relationship, not because she's done more, but because I've invested at a level that makes her more valuable to me. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. So, and, and you brought in the football fans <clears throat> to the podcast. Thank you. You're welcome, Redskins fans, for that. Yeah, that was, yeah. And well, and I was going to say, <laughs> even sadder than being a Redskins fan, I'm actually a Raiders fan. So I understand. Oh, oh. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Well, I, I completely understand uh, ba- backing a team that just will not come through for you. Um, okay. How did so, I get into this situation? The, yeah, the, this, 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 uh, this S show. <laughs> and then the women say. And then the women say. What, I, what, what do you mean, Elise? I, I don't know. What does I, is she, is she, I think maybe she's looking for the women's perspective, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe, sorry. Maybe sorry. Mi- Misty is at home doing doing I, doing, doing work do, she's working I mean, while stands she, over here having a good time yeah here sipping coffee, coffee just and chatting out. it up hanging out misty's you know so, working so let, let's do working this the grind let's do this let's listen to my pd misty she actually uh she actually told me um we need to get to some points here so let's make this get really to them we, we're talking to a lot of americans here so let's let, let's let's package everything here. Okay. You got questions that you have ready to go, right? Like common problems in marriage, right? We were talking about it before the show. So oh. Let, so let's run through some of those. Um, L- let's talk about some of these issues that people run into in marriage. Like, uh, well, I mean, I had I had the ones that I was like, man, these are things I talked about with my wife, lessons we've learned, not necessarily questions. And now you're going to... Okay, so, so let's... This was so much smoother earlier, Stan Dagnabbit. Man, you. Well, okay. Sorry. So too much hooker for you. Um. So, <laughs> what, tell me what the uh, what was the first one that that you had on your phone? The, okay. So the the one thing I that my wife and I talked about previously, but one thing that we've talked about before is that your differences are a positive, not a negative. Okay. Stop right there. Now, the problem in marriage here, right, that we're gonna address, is the fact that hey. I'm into MMA. Mm-hmm. I cannot get my wife to watch it with me. Right. Or, or actually video games. I love video games. She will not sit down to play video games with me. Right. She's not the one. We, we got we to gotta, we gotta cut this <laughs> she's off. She's not the one. She's not Is the there one. a meme like that? Like the speed dating meme? Like she's the one or <laughs> yeah. she's not the one? Not the one. Not the one. <laughs> so, so, I mean, put, put in your whatever. Like put... There's a blank there okay. for for you, Wh- whoever whoever's watching. There's a blank. Right. Your wife doesn't do this, and you you're, love it. Your husband isn't into this thing that you're into. Yep. How are you able to have a fulfilled relationship if they're not into the same stuff that you're into? It just makes sense, right? They should be. Well, I mean, to to some degree, I think that probably there could be some, you know. Okay, so well, here I'll give you an actual example. That way, it's not it's not theory. I'll give you an actual example. So, um, so I'm a huge Huskers fan. Okay, so I'm a huge uh, when it comes to college football, big Huskers fan. When Saturday rolls around, I usually only set aside the three or so hours it takes to watch that game, and then I'll do other stuff. But you know, I love to you know put on the jersey, make the nachos, do the thing, or whatever. My my wife, in an effort to invest in that. Even she says she's a fan, but I, I don't. She doesn't care about it to the same degree that I do. Um, but she'll come and watch sometimes the whole game. Sometimes she makes it through the first quarter, and then something else comes up or whatever. But I think that's just that simple. Um, it it kind of goes back to that investing in something for somebody else, living outside of yourself, not just for yourself. So she invests in in, in that way. Um, it, but I mean, honestly, even if even if they're not. Um, so if she never watched a Huskers game with me again ever, 
Um, as long as she doesn't talk during it, as, I don't want. As long as she, oh, stay. Out I'm of, not even going there. Stay out of uh, the room. <laughs> stay out of the room, Misty. We don't need. We don't need the room to be all uh, mis- we, misted we, up. We don't. We don't need it. Uh, <laughs> no, I need my wife to watch the game with me. But um, and then the, the things that she's a part of. If, if if even if we have some of those separate hobbies and things, doesn't make us the wrong person for each other. It actually can be a nice balance. Now that that does not go without saying that somewhere in the middle, the two of you should find time and some sort of something that you can do together, spending time together. There does need to be some common ground, but I think that the differences, um, the idea of, of, of your differences being a positive, not a negative, or would, would actually probably fit better with things like, um, I am a big picture dreaming kind of person. I like ideas. Um, I, I like to think, uh, I like to think five to 10 years down the road. And I like to think about what I'm going to be doing in those 10 years. And I want to try to set myself on a course now to get to that 10 year mark. So that, that's the way I think. And I think in terms of, of concepts and ideas, my wife does not, my wife thinks in terms of here's the to-do list. This is what we have to accomplish today, today in order to like have a successful day. I've got to get through this list. And my wife and, and there's other people out your listeners will resonate with this if they're anything like this. My wife will go through her to-do list. If she does something else that's not on the list, she will add that to the to-do list just to check it off. Like that that's how my wife operates. She operates in so, plans and steps and to-do. So let me let me say it this way, because it's the same, it's the same in my household. I am like you. I'm a dreamer, entrepreneur spirit guy. You right. know, I'm right. I'm, I'm, right, look, right. I'm, look, I'm, look, I'm going. I want to do this thing. I got this idea and I want to make it happen. Whereas my wife is the, how are you going to afford it? She exactly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> how do we pay for this? Tanya, are you in here right now? I think I just heard you. Um, no, the, but, but the spirit of Misty. So, so she's, so I'm the CEO. Like if you were to look at this as, as a business, CEOs are the people that go, this is what we're going to do. This is the the vision, the long term. This is the, and they get people excited on the team. Right. Whereas, my wife and sounds like your wife are the COOs. They're the chief operating officers, Officer, yeah. and they're like, "Yeah, that's great. Uh, let's <laughs> let's look at the budget. Let's look at our our, our time expenditure. Do we have capital expenses?" And da, 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 yeah. and and the CEO's like, "Why are you crapping on my no, dreams, this son? Is, this is this is a great idea. Why you gotta be poo poo in the yeah. thing?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I hear you. But you need your CEO. So, you need your COO. So going back to marriage, some people would view that as a negative and say, well, because they don't like my ideas, I guess I got the wrong person, you know, or I guess I should. And, and they'll think they'll think about the differences as a negative that should separate them. I, I, my wife and I have had to get to a place where we see those as a positive. So now I've learned in, in marriage, I've learned from my own marriage that when I have a new idea or something I'd like us to accomplish, I have to, I have to express that in a certain kind of way. And I need to tailor some of my communication and how I do it, um, and you know, in, invite her out for a coffee and a nice lunch, and you know, prep her for this conversation that I'm about to say. Hey, so uh, you want to go uh, do X Y Z? Uh, and so I kind of have to prep her for that. She also has to take a step into the middle a little bit. We both can't be in the corners. If you're in a, if you're in a marriage where you just think I stay in my corner because it's who I am and I'm not coming out, you're gonna have tension forever. You're, you're, just, you're doomed. You're doomed. It is. You will always have tension it, it will that will never go away going back to the two people both putting in the same amount of effort putting in effort to the come, sa- to the same ends though right they the, have to both agree on the ends right in order for it to work if if yeah. you if your wife is going no no this is where we're going and you're going no no, no, no we're I'm going over here this way. right that that's the direction the marriage is going to go right two opposite directions right it's going to go different directions so the idea with the positives the differences being a positive is that my wife can actually help me walk through an idea that I've got and she can actually help me to see the steps that I didn't see in the idea she can help me to understand what it was that I was missing but what I do is I the, the idea side of me I'm able to kind of pull her out of her shell a little bit and help her to be a little bit more adventurous if she was sitting here and I don't want to put words in her mouth but if she was sitting here she, she is she is sitting here she's she, on she's, she's on, on live stream, she's on so. live stream so it's close she can she can comment if I'm wrong but she would say it was it's my kind of entrepreneurial idea spirit that spurred her to to get to the point that she would start a photography business because thank she, God for that I'm trying to get she, my wife to be a writer she, yeah like, like Full on writer. She writes and she does, but she doesn't write. I'm like, and, and this is the thing. She wants to do it for fun. Oh, right, right, right. Which, which I got to a point where I'm like, just let her do it for fun. And but I'm, I'm constantly always thinking, 
you know, you could, you could make some money though. Yeah, we could, we could actually. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We get a book deal. I'm like on the phone with publishers, like as we speak. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, what are you saying? No, I'm just. I was looking back through to see if we had anything new. Keep, keep let, going. I was let's, looking let, let me let me throw some shine on Becky Collins, the CFO. Yeah. Becky Collins says video games. I can actually talk about that one. LOL. Hubby <laughs> loves them. I couldn't stand them. We found common ground. He has his stream, and I actually contribute behind the scenes, sometimes online too. I had to rethink in how he uh, supports my passion. Let me passion of theater, of theater, and remember that we didn't have to love the same things, but we have found middle right. ground on supporting each other with it all. Yeah, beautiful. Right. Yeah. Well, well said. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what I, what I'm talking about. So my wife and I come to the middle. She supports the idea with a bunch of details I didn't think about, but I'm able to kind of help pull her out of her shell to think a little bit differently about how life could be done. Now she's running a business, and her business is is pretty successful for the most part. Go ahead and plug it. She's uh, Misty Rod of Photography. So if you're in the Northern Virginia area looking for a family photographer, wedding, whatever. Great stuff, mistyrada.com. She just launched a new website, mistyrada.com. Um, but uh, she would say it was it was my idea kind of thinking that helped her get to that point. So we've each, in our own ways, being totally different people, have helped each other to be better, to see things we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Right. So you view your your differences as a positive, not a negative. And as long as you stay in the corners going, this is who I am, I mean, you're in big, you're in a world of hurt. And I like what you said when you said, uh, I have to. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna paraphrase here, obviously. But you, you said you have to know how to come at her the right way with ideas and things. Because if you came at her, say, "Dang it, Misty, you you need to do something with your life here with this f- photography oh, thing." Oh my, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you came at her with like that type of attitude, she would have, um, you know, probably backhanded you or something, something, <laughs> something <laughs> pimpish, probably. But the, but but. <laughs> The fact that part of the work, it's not just having, you know, your CEO and she's a COO mentality. It's not just that. It's you also have to know how to talk to her the right way. And she has to know how to talk to you that I'm flipping it here because we're talking about men to women, but women to men yeah. also have to learn about their about their significant other and how, how to, to talk to them, yeah. w- which will produce good things, not an argument, not a fight. Well, it's too late because she commented, pretty successful for the most part, question mark. Wow, honey. So I I, I did not do a very good job of that. Yeah, you, it, lo- you lost your pinpoint. She is literally the greatest photographer in the entire Northern Virginia area. And if you don't hire my wife to do your photography, you're... You're just a fool. You're an idiot. You're just a fool. You're an idiot. Absolute idiot, because she is the best that there, you, there is. There you go. See? So so, so he just uh, put a Band-Aid on that sore. Good job. <laughs> put a Band-Aid on that shrapnel wound That's from right. that bleeding out. You get. You are teaching... <laughs> you, you're teaching guys subliminally how to do this. That's awesome. Oh, phew. So Barbara uh, Martinez says, communication. Yeah, that's right. Communication. You got to know how to talk to that other person yes. that you live with every day. And your, yes. life, your life depends on that communication. So let's talk, let's talk communication a little bit. Okay. In what ways, how do you talk to Misty if you have an idea and you want her to co-sign on that? How do you come at her? Well, uh, f- part of it is, is um, having taken the time to learn how she communicates number one so that i don't shoot myself in the foot right out the gate but if for my particular situation with my wife if i'm coming at at it with a brand new idea or a thought of what could be um my thought process is more of a hey okay so i have to be real with my wife I'm already 10 years down the road in my head. I've already I've already thought of it. I'm already way down over here. So I'm going to back up a little bit, and, and I'm just going to tell you what I'm thinking. This is my idea. This is my thought. Now, you don't need to answer because I know that you need to you need to marinate. You need to process that, and I just drop some big old thing. Like, you know, coming from our uh, previous ministry in Illinois, um, so the, the big idea was um, I think maybe God wants us to move to Virginia, and all of our family, everybody we know is in Missouri. And so, hey, I think we're supposed to move to Virginia. Like, this was the big idea. We're going to go to this thing called a multi-site church. They've got these three campuses and, like, over a 1,000 people and yada, yada. And, I mean, it's the deer in the headlights, like, 
wait, what? We're going to do what? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so the idea, so whenever I have those kinds of ideas of, of, hey, this is where we're going, I have to just say, I'm already way down the road, but I want you to process this chunk. Let's, and literally, I, I will say, let's, let's go to lunch together in two days. And let's just talk about it. See, see where you're, what you're thinking. What questions do you have? And I, I have to communicate along with her. I have to b- help bring her along the same path that I've been on. Because I was, I was in my head the whole time, right? She's not inside my head. She doesn't know what I'm thinking. So I have to help her be on that journey inside of my head with me. I, I have to help walk her through it because she's not been on it with one. Me. And and my, by the way, talking to a she 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 added uh, Misty added CFO, but so she's C- CFO, yes, she's yeah. C- COO and CFO. CFOs and COOs do not give them the whole thing right away. Do it in a step by step thing. Right. Give them information. Let them process it. Let them figure that out, and then go to the next level. Why? Right. Because they're detail oriented people. She wants to process this this thing, and then process this, and I need these steps here. And yeah, so uh, I'm I'm almost giving her giving her those things in chunks. Chunks. So she can process each one. Okay. Now now that's not my natural. I'd much rather sit down and for three hours just vent out on a whiteboard all this crazy stuff we're about to do. Which I I'm pointing at whiteboards all around my yeah, office. I mean, I you could talk to to my wife and my assistant. I, I mean, my assistant Barb. I, I love whiteboards. I'm like, I, I need a whiteboard in my house um, because I want to be able to just chicken scratch stuff all over the place. So I mean, I could definitely do that. But if I do that, I mean, it it's it's almost the equivalent of me just I mean cruising down the the highway in a in a sports car and my wife's just being dragged along behind me. That that's not good for us or our marriage. We're not actually going to get to where we want to go when that's going on. So I've got to kind of put the brakes on a bit. And say, okay, here here's this thought. Here's this chunk. Let's process this. Here's where I'm at. Here's where I'm going. But let's just process this part. And so for me, communication is really learning is learning your spouse. And whenever you've invested the time and the energy and that commitment that we've already been talking about, when you invest that, you know how they commute. You know what they need. And so if you do it well, you give them what they need so they can come along with you, and you can each, again, those differences now become a positive, not a hindrance. Misty says, and once I process those things, he, being Stan, is good about listening to what I've processed, even if I don't agree with him. Okay, so at that point, Stan's not like, oh, come on, Misty, come on. Like, okay, so has she ever, like, basically took your process processed your idea and go this is garbage maybe not <laughs> not in those words this is a dumb idea no and but you are still hot yes let's say you're still hot on this idea then oh, what? okay oh well i mean if if i can't come on stan who wears the pants in this family <laughs> i'm gonna get him in trouble today uh, um i i would i would say this my my um so there's there's a there's a, a an overlooked, I hate to go this direction, but I'm gonna. Uh, there's an overlooked verse in the Bible that most people get stuck on other verses, and they get weird about most subservient. Most and, women get and and yada men, yada. Men love this verse. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but there's this verse, Ephesians five twenty one, that says, "Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ." And so sometimes, if if I am hot on a dream or an idea, and she just can't get on board. I have to submit to her sometimes. I have to submit to her out of reverence for who I believe Jesus is, and so I will let dreams die if it if it makes my marriage stronger. I, I will let a dream die. Um, the the weirdest, craziest, biggest dream that I had uh, years ago was to move to New Zealand and launch a church in uh, I believe it was in Auckland, maybe Christchurch in New Zealand. Uh, and, and that was an idea that, uh, that I thought, Hey, maybe God's calling us to start churches in New Zealand. Um, and here's my wife who's, was raised on a farm in Missouri and all of her family's there. She went to college there. Her <laughs> grandparents are there. Like everybody's there. I'm like, Hey, what do you think about New Zealand? <laughs> and, uh, um, I would say I let that one die. Uh, she was definitely not. I got. On, I got to stop you for a second. Not on board with that one. My <laughs> my my wife, who's actually watching this for once, she's watching one of my podcasts. Yay! She goes, uh, "Snap! I know, I know, honey. I I'm listening to the man. Sometimes dreams <laughs> need to die, and I will try better to submit to you. Sometimes you owe me twenty bucks, Tanya. Sometimes." <laughs> 
<laughs> sometimes I will submit. Y- yeah. <laughs> you, you submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And there are some things I've really wanted to do that even though she, well, moving to Virginia was a big one. It was like, wow. Not as bad as Auckland. Not nearly as bad as New Zealand. Uh, you can drive back home from Virginia. You, you, you can't know, from... You know what I think, Stan? I think this is the, this is all part of the Auckland plan. You're like, <laughs> just, all right, babe, we... It's uh, just a cog in it's, the wheel. It's, it's, it's Missouri to Virginia, Virgin, now, Virginia she, to yeah, England. Yeah, she feels safe now. <laughs> uh, I'm just setting her up. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like in 30 years, you're in Auckland going, yes, it worked. My evil plan. <laughs> That's great. So um, no, but so that one I let die, and it was it was for the best. We weren't on the same page, and uh, one of the things I, I I was told at one point was, um, you and your spouse will know if if you're supposed to go in a certain direction, especially if you're together, when you both sense peace about the next step. And so I can feel peace about a next step pretty quickly because I'm the one dreaming up the idea. But man, if if I can. If I can share it with my wife and we can get on the same page and we both experience peace about what's next, um, it it makes for a, a very fulfilling marriage along the way. So Barbara Martinez actually took the words right out of my mouth. But at what point do you submit? Probably not easy to explain. And I'll add to that. Yeah. I'll add to that. How did you know God was pulling you in that direction? Because I hear a lot of preachers and Christians go... Yeah, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm listening to what God's telling me. Well, how do you know when God's actually pushing you towards that? Now, you, you yeah. mentioned the peace thing. Right. But maybe sometimes the you're both not still not at peace from right. an idea. Right. So so when do you really know this is the right right direction and it's time to some one of you to submit? Um in 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 my marriage the way I've done that is basically to say God if if God is calling us to something, we will both we will both experience peace about that decision. And if not, then then it's probably not God who's prompting. It's probably me. It's probably something I just want to do. You know what you're doing? That's killing a lot of people, especially non Christians that are listening to this. Sorry, <laughs> no, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, not sorry. Is this? You just took control right out of my hands, and all as a human being. Yeah. One of the things that I struggle with yeah. is contr- I want control over the yep. decisions in my life, and who is God to tell me right. or anybody to tell me that this isn't the right direction if I believe it's the right direction? And that's that's big. That That is a hard one to let go of. I mean, and that and yeah, no, I mean, that's huge. Because yeah, I, wanna, I ultimately want to control things too. That's a battle that I face. I, I want to control my life. I want to do what I want to do. I, you know, I, I had dreams coming out of high school of... Uh, you know, being an architect, and I had dreams of of one at one point being a football coach. And uh, you know, of course, as a kid, it was like I'm going to coach for Nebraska, kind of thing. Of course, you know, of course. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, I, I'm still waiting on Scott Frost to give me a call. He can call me anytime. You heard that, uh, Scott? Scott, give make, me a call, man. Make it happen. Uh, He's very good. I've yeah. seen him. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm great. I got this. <laughs> um, so I mean, I I had dreams of things I wanted to do, but then giving up control because I believe there's a greater next step or a greater good. That that can be hard, and so a lot of times, what happens is, it's it's the death of a dream. It was the same thing with New Zealand. It's like, okay, well, I got to let that one go. Clearly, that wasn't it, and you got to kind of let it die. And there's there's some pain, but that's that's part of the um, that's part of the selflessness factor of of walking through life with other people in in a way that says it's not just all about me. I and when I bring that, I, I'm in a marriage now. It can't be all about me. That that ju- it's just not going to work. That was one of the other little lessons I had written down here. But it was just it's just this idea of I, my marriage won't work as long as I think my wife's just along for the ride and I get to do whatever I want. It's just it's not going to work. Now I, it where I'm at in life and what I believe, obviously I God is in that mix for me. Other people aren't at that place, but even even not even w- even if people are living as if God is not a part of it or a part of their marriage, they still have to give up some of the control because eventually the, the two people have to work together. They're, we don't work well whenever we just separate into corners and this is who I am and I will not change. And I, it just, we've already talked about that a little bit. It just doesn't really work. It doesn't work that way. You know, that's well said. So let's, uh, let's talk about this then. All right. There's a thing called the, I'm calling it this, uh, the love and respect cycle. So in marriage, right. <laughs> Um, there was a book called Love and Respect, right? <laughs> You're and, and, calling it that? Well, yeah. I Okay. 
the, I'm talking about the yeah. si- the love and respect cycle. Got it. Isn't I'm it? With you. That's not really a thing, but that's what I call it. Got it. Okay. But love and respect is a thing, right? Got it. Yep. And so the idea behind this book is that um, that m- women. I, okay, let me. Some of this, guys, is going to be uh, very. Let me say what I'm going to say before you flame me online. That's really what I'm trying to say. Don't <laughs> don't flame me right away. For okay, keyboard warrior, step away from the keyboard. Step away, just a second. Let's have the conversation first, and then <laughs> and then you can flame me. Okay, but in this book, basically, men desire respect from their wives. Women desire love from their husbands. Okay, it's vi- that's a very general, general, like, very general statement. Because yeah. really, both people need love, and both people need respect. But men love the feeling of being respected by their peers, by their wife, people, and women love love. They want to be loved. They want to feel that and and have that in their lives, okay? So with the love and and respect cycle, Mm -hmm. all right, how do you look at that as far as in your relationship, relationships where you've helped out? In what ways can a man show... We'll start with the man... In what ways can a man show love, and why is that important? Why is it important? How can they do it? Uh, well, I, I, the definition of of love that I go by um, is basically the the level of love of of somebody that would would give up their life for that other human being. And so, for me, for me to love my wife well means, to some degree, that I I it feels it feels like death. It, that it hurts, that I feel like I'm dying because I, I am I am giving up things that I want that mean something to me to to let those things die for another human being. And so uh, in what works well in in my marriage is if I can process that <clears throat> a little bit ahead of time, let certain things die and then maybe approach or whatever. Um, but but I, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. It makes more sense in my head. But the idea of love for me is the idea of I would do anything for my wife. I would die for my wife. And so if I'm loving her well, it w- the things that I want the most whenever I give them up on behalf of her, it feels painful to me. But but it's for her to make her better. Now let now give give us some examples of that every day. What are um, some everyday ways that you give love even to the point where it hurts you? <laughs> I don't know if I've done it quite to that degree. I'm just saying that's like the, the top end of the scale. Um, so, uh, for for instance, that that uh, that again, we're just kind of generalizing, okay? So we're just generalizing. But the the typical male, uh, you know, they want to come home from work and they want to uh, they want to crack open a beer and they want to watch the race. They want to watch the game. They want to do the thing. And then a couple hours later, they want to go to bed. And and they just kind of that that's just very general. That's not that's not Across the board, this is how everybody is. It's just kind of a general thing. The guy's done the work all, gone to work all day. Comes home, I want my beer, and I'm gonna chill out and whatever. Right. So the idea for me of do putting in a hard day's work, I worked all day, coming home, and when I'm tired, when I'm exhausted, when I'm worn out, when I just want to think about me, and 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 have the drink and chill out and watch the game and yada yada, it's it's going ahead and doing the dishes anyway. Or, it's, or, it's, or like Barbara says, put kids to bed for your wife. It's it's putting the kids to bed for your wife so she doesn't have to. It's it's vacuuming. It's it's noticing. Uh, it's noticing that there's stuff on the floor, and instead of waiting or hoping she'll sweep it, you just sweep it up anyway. You throw it away. You you. It's ta- It's a little bit of initiative, and and it's it's definitely not on the same level as well. I feel like I'm dying, and it's not at that kind of peak level. But love is doing something for somebody else to your own a bit to your own detriment. It, it's me saying, you know what, I really want to do something else right now, but because of who you are and because I want the best for you, I am going to do this thing. I notice the dishes. I don't say, it goes back to your the, the guy that didn't throw his wife under the bus for the clothes in the shower or whatever that was. Yeah. Um, it, it goes whatever. back to that. Well, that, that, that story, mm-hmm. but it goes back to that. It's, it's, it's not me seeing the dishes in the sink and looking around going, hey, Hey woman, what have you been doing all day? Will dish, you do anything? Dish. Look, look, see the dishes over here. You, know? you do a good. That could see Misty. See, you're lucky. Yep, see. That could have been Stan. That could be. He did that so well. I think that's part of his personality. <laughs> is that voice? <laughs> it is. That comes out every now saying and then. those things to you. 
Hey, woman. Hey, what's going on? Um, uh, let, but that's that's what it is for me. It's it's going ahead and doing the things that I know that she's going to need and she's going to that I I need to do for her to help her to be better, even if I don't feel like it at the time. Now, right now, right now, Stan is talking about a. Uh, you could say it's like a mind frame, right? Like the mind frame is that I'm going to do the thing that I don't feel like doing, or don't even feel like I. I'm justified to do the opposite, the wrong thing, right? The the right. selfish thing. I'm justified to be selfish right now because I worked hard, because this is her job or this is his job, right? Um, let's contextualize it with the love languages. Right. Now, do you know the love languages? Are you familiar with this? Quality time, uh, physical touch, acts of service. Um, I am familiar. There's two more. I'm trying to remember all five. Words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. Uh, help out uh, people online. Misty's only brought that up like 15 times on the Facebook page. <laughs> so, um, uh, acts of service, words of affirmation, physical touch, uh, gifts. Oh, gifts. And, and gifts. Gifts, is, right. gifts are the fifth That's one. not big for me either. So I, I, I I'm, not hu- I'm not huge on gifts. That's not where I feel the feel love either. My wife feels love in love languages. She feels love the most in, in, the, uh, in the acts of service. When she comes into the kitchen, and I've already done the dishes... She feels the most like I care about her the most because I've thought to do that for her. It's See, just because people were. Con- I think some people are going to be confused listening to the thing when I say, "How do you show love?" And you didn't give the right. Hollywood answer of "I'm uh, the roses on the thing." And oh and, yeah, and yeah. It, it's like okay, yeah, that's the Hollywood BS. Like sort right. of this is what love looks right. like. But really, if you so contextualizing it into the fact that there is such a thing as love languages. Some people have different love languages, all right? And they, and they, and these are a distillation of each one, right? So for instance, uh, Misty, Mist, one of Misty's big ones is um, acts of service. Yep. Stan immediately went to doing the dishes. Because Vacuuming, vac- sweeping the floor. Because he knows that this is a way to show love to her, to her specifically. Right. Yep. Now you guys listening, whoever your spouse is, it, it would behoove you to get the book or at least go on the Gary website. Ch- Gary Chapman. And check and he that's the doctor guy that Dr. That, Gary Chapman. That took put together the love language idea. Mm-hmm. Figure out, take the test. There's like a sh- short test thing. Take the test, figure out what your love languages are and what her or his love languages are. Yep. And then now you don't have to do everything. Just do the ones that are top, the top two or three on their list. Now you know how to show them love. Yeah. Okay. Um, for Tanya, it's it's the same. My wife, it's the same thing. It's uh, acts of service and quality time are two of her biggies. For most guys, it's physical touch, ladies. So uh, <laughs> don't be afraid. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's what's interesting about the love languages. What what humans what we naturally do is we naturally love somebody else in the way that we want to be loved. And so if. Um, um, Uh, So, for instance, if my wife's love language is acts of service, she naturally will think to love me in the form of an act of service. So she may make a really nice dinner and say, this is me expressing love because I've done this service for you. I'm tired and I still made a really nice dinner because that's what flows out of her naturally when I may not necessarily hear acts of service the same way. Um, And so what what can create tension in a marriage is, is whenever the two people are trying so hard to love each other, but they're doing it in the way that they sense it and feel it themselves, but the other one isn't hearing it. The other one doesn't get it. It's not their love language. It's not their love language. They they don't so they don't sense it. And so you're like, but I do love you because I'm 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 been doing all these dishes for you. And and she's like, dude, I my wardrobe is down to nothing. I could really use a gift card, you know, like right. I need some presents here or you know, whatever the thing is. So so you're sitting you're sitting there and you're busting your your hump. Right. You guys like the uh, PG I can finally put in the in the, in the <laughs> iTunes thing. Don't do that for me. N- not explicit. This is great. Oh yeah. Um, don't do that for me. Usually we have some very uh, unsavory characters in this podcast. <laughs> but 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 yeah, so like she might be busting her hump for me doing acts of service. Right. And I don't care if another dish gets done ever again. Right. It just doesn't. But right. if she does physical touch, <laughs> maybe maybe I'd feel a little love. I'm just saying. <laughs> <And> no. <laughs> now now let's let's be let's go ahead and while we're detailing it out, 
Physical touch doesn't mean just what you're insinuating that it means. Sex. Uh, it's not. It, it doesn't just mean that. No, but no, no, no. I, I like. I. Some people like physical touch. Actually, is what it what it is. It's what it is. Actual physical touch, holding hands, the uh, walking by, the pat on the back. The, it's just that feeling of okay, they're here, they're massage, with me. Yeah, yeah. Qu- a quick shoulder rub, like they're with me, they're here. Right. They're like that. That some people feel love in that way. You you can actually tell this uh, in your kids. Whenever you want, as your kids are growing up, you can almost pinpoint what their love language is. Because it's the thing that they value that motivates them to whatever. So, like, I've got I've got one kid who, uh, if if I was to hand him twenty bucks at which is a gift, I love you, Dad. He would <laughs> lose his mind, like freak out. And then I've got another kid who, if I go up and kind of rub his back or kind of play with his hair behind his ear, he just melts into a puddle, you know, on the floor. And, right. and I'm I'm willing to bet. His love language is going to be physical touch. The other one's going to be gifts. Um, I haven't quite figured out the, the third one just yet. You'll she's, figure it out. She's kind of got all five. Oh, great. <laughs> she's like, I just need it all. <laughs> like, but um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, you can even see it in your kids and help. You can instill in them in them to show them love by doing the thing that motivates them and helps them. So, and, I mean, that, that's it, not this topic. And, it, and in fact, um, my dad, who, you know, like when I was growing up, there was no the seven love language. Wait. So five. Five love languages. Thank you. The five, there was no five love languages book or anything, but he instinctively knew words of affirmation was huge for me. So I, I can still to this day remember when I, when I think, like, think back to you know, good things about my dad, um, he would you know, say, man, you did that awesome. That was, that was great. Mm, yeah. um, you're really good at this. Or, and that, and that, that's awesome. I love that. I eat that stuff up. That's, my, that's one of my... Love languages, words of affirmation. So yeah, so yeah. so if my wife is affirming me with words, right? Mm-hmm. She's she's scoring points big time with me, you know. And and again, go go to check it out. Five love languages online. Go take that test. I'm sure it's free somewhere. Um, and you know, figure figure that out with your spouse so that now you can actually instead of busting your hump, giving them what you consider <clears throat> love. Right. Give give them what they want. Get your ego out of it and do what they what they need. And and that's part of the work, right? Is yeah. understanding your spouse it, yeah. to that level. It's part of the submission. It's part of the dying to myself so that that person can actually be better than me. Uh, one of the lines I use <clears throat> for people who are getting married is simply that uh, marriage, uh, the, the design of marriage or the reason for marriage is actually to help the other person become who God created them to be. And whenever I view marriage through the lens of, I'm actually here to help that person become better and to become everything that they are created to be, designed to be, suddenly my marriage, the, the whole lens on the marriage shifts away from, well, I didn't get what I want today, so I'm going to sit in the corner and sulk. You know, and so it brings everybody, brings my wife and I out of our um, our individual corners to come into the middle, realizing. <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. Realizing that we're in this thing together. Puberty. We're, yeah, puberty's been rough on me this year. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah. So yeah, coming um, together. Right now, let's now let's let's segue off into the other side, which is the respect side. Okay. All right. What do you respect con- it? Respect. 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 My respect. Daughter. respect. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> what, did, <clears throat> what did what did he say? Uh, Birdman said <laughs> that I don't know if you're familiar with hip hop, but on a hip hop station, oh, yeah, 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 you know, Midwest, right? And they, <laughs> y'all do that, right? Um, is that considered Missouri's Midwest, right? Yeah. Okay, I got that right. Yep. Um, yeah, Birdman. Birdman says, "Put some put put some spect on my name. <laughs> put some spect on my name. <laughs> respect. Um, respect it. So let's talk about respect." Uh, what do you think men need from from their wives as far as respect goes? How do how do we process respect? What does that even look like in a marriage? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I so here here's one of the things that that comes out when people will eventually come and knock on the door and say, "Hey, we need some we need some help or whatever." One of the things that comes out almost every time is the the feeling that the that the man has the husband has that again <clears throat> again stereotypically speaking but again he's been he's been at work making the bacon bringing home the money paying the bills doing the stuff and then he he comes home and there's a certain 
all all of a sudden the wife has this all these things and then the husband feels disrespected because he just was doing all of, a whole bunch of things to try to make things work and so there's this this almost tension and i think a lot of times a lot of men put so much value in the fact that they are providing for their family they're going to work they're they're trying to pay the bills and i think if you really got to the heart of that there some of that may be unhealthy and it just a work of, kind of a workaholic kind of a thing but also some of it's healthy in the sense that they there's just this drive inside of a guy to take care of his family and so there's some there's some unhealth in it there's some health in it there's there's some tension there that the guy has to wrestle with but i think i think what a lot of guys want to hear is is they just want to hear their wife say that they appreciate them for for taking care of the family. A, a lot of times what gets communicated to the husband when the wife has a whole list of things to do when he gets home from work or whenever she's got complaints because she can't afford the nicest, you know, purse or the new car and the neighbors over there have that the husband starts to take that as I'm not I'm not taking care of my family. I'm not I'm not doing a good enough job. I'm a piece of crap. I'm a, I'm a um, piece of junk. Here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm slaving sixty hours over here, fifty hours, and and I can't even do this. So then, no respect. It, I get there, no respect. I, I get no respect for the work I'm doing, and I'm trying. And uh, so I think what ends up happening is there is there is a little bit of tension that can come with that, um, for sure. Um, it's, that's probably that's one of the biggest ones that I see. And and Northern Virginia, where we live, is not exempt from that, based on the way. Work is done here. I mean, it's you mean twenty four hours a day, seven yeah, days a week. Yeah, I mean, it's a whole other level culture of of trying to provide and uh, and guys who are trying to make ends meet because everything here is so. I mean, it's so high end, so expensive to pull off that. I mean, there's a lot of people, you know, and and again, that's it's just, it's just general. I'm just speaking from my perspective, but there are there are women who work too. I'm not trying to say women don't work. Um, but the the husband who is working to try to provide for his family, who then hears these these sentences, or, well, so and so's husband, they 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 were able to do X Y Z, you know, and they hear that, and then over time, it's not the first time they hear it, it's not not the second time, it's not the tenth time, it's that you know somewhere down the road, it's five years in, it's three years in when they're just tired of hearing it, that suddenly there's this explosion. Um, and, and everything that, all that kind of, <laughs> um, warrior part of the guy that just wants to come out and fight for his family, fight for his, I mean, that all just comes out, but now it's not directed toward, Hey, let's be better. It's directed at, at his wife yeah, because, because he, because it's, he, it's, she's now the enemy it's sto- it's <laughs> to some degree. What you're talking about is stored up resentment. Right. You store up that resentment. And here's the yeah. thing. Here's something. I, can can we retire a a phrase that's, that's I feel like, been overused, especially in today's culture, happy wife, happy life? Hmm. There's some wisdom in that, but it ain't longevity wisdom because what ends up happening is, uh, hey, man, you know, happy wife, happy life, happy wife, happy life. You keep saying that. And it's like, hey, there's two people in this thing. Yeah. It should be... It, it that that should not be the the end goal shouldn't be i uh i'm going to never be happy or i'm going to cons, cons, i'm going to suffer in silence so yeah. to speak right mm-hmm. see that's how that's how wives get uh you know that's how wives end up at the bottom of a river somewhere like seriously like guy, guys i mean that's a joke I, i'm jo- you better get i'm joking i'm one. joking but i'm kind of not joke joking not joking um, where a guy, one of the smartest things that I, that I, that I got from, uh, a counselor that, that, uh, my wife and I had been seeing was men are, uh, uh, sensitive men mm. are sensitive. Yep. And this isn't that new age garbage that gets crammed down. Like you got to be more sensitive and in touch with your feminine. No, no, no. Men are sensitive. Men pretend like they're not sensitive manly men, right? Yeah. They're sensitive. It's just they're not sensitive about the same things. Where men are sensitive is their self-worth, mm-hmm. their worth to yes. the family, yes. yep. and how does this lady across from me yes. see me? Yep. That's how they're sensitive. So yep. if the lady across from me looks at me like I'm a piece of crap, if I even get that sense, 
Yeah, that's bad. It's bad. That's yeah. that. That is a marriage on the rocks because because yeah. what you're doing is you're 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 pushing this guy to a place where he's not really going to be happy. He's not meant to be in that place. A guy, you know, there's dirt bags out there. Most of us are dirt bags trying not to be dirt bags, hmm. but there <laughs> is a place guys want to be, and that is I want to be respected by my wife and kids. I want them to respect me. Yep. It's innate. So yeah. what are some ways that uh, spouses can show, can, can give respect or show respect? What, well, mm. First of all, what are some of, what are some of the hot buttons where there, there's no, res- the, the, there's no respect sort of, uh, what is it? What's, what's the antonym to respect? Uh, what's a good, I don't know, disrespect. Oh, <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you're, you're so smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the words they just come. To they me. just come to you. You should write. <laughs> you should write a book, Stan. I should write a book. No, yeah. but like disrespect, right? What are some ways that we'll, we'll say wives now specifically right now? What are some ways that wives disrespect their husbands and don't even realize it? Man, I. How does Misty disrespect you, Stan? That's what I'm trying she, to. I'm trying to doesn't. dance around it. She doesn't respect she you. She doesn't. No, she she does not disrespect. Happy she, wife, happy life, man. She she's a uh, yeah. She's yeah. No, she does. She doesn't. She's. Um, I think her and I have both learned that 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 kind of delicate balance, that dance in the middle, of of kind of wrestling around the tension, and, and she's not disrespectful. Um, it's. It's not even that it may not disrespect may not be the antonym. It may it may be almost more along the lines of um, uh, almost apathy to to what to what the guy brings to the table. And and to to some degree, there is a push in our society um, away from some of what masculinity brings to the table. Absolutely, and, and, I mean one hundred percent. That's going they're, on. They're killing masculinity. They, they that is that is underway. They're, I mean, they're trying to do that, and to and again to your point, to soften men, to be more sensitive, get in touch with your feminine, to be side, women, to be women, and and it, we are pushing that way. And it's almost like the value of what the guy brings to the table is no longer valued. And so now you've got a bunch of guys. And people say, "Well, it just must. Well, he's spending some money. It must be a midlife crisis." Well, it's not so much a midlife crisis as much as who he is inside is not valued and respected. There's somebody who's apathetic to his efforts and his attention and his work, and and so he just. I mean, a lot of guys just give up the will to live. Now, there's no excuse for. Um, in my opinion, there's no excuse for uh, an affair. There's no excuse for a guy to to jump into bed with another woman. There's no excuse for a guy, uh, to, in your words, uh, put a woman at the in, in the bottom of the river. There's no excuse for the guy to just f- to flake out on his family. Men men need to find a way through it. But the the reason a lot of that's happening is because we devalue and disrespect what they bring to the table to a degree that men. It's like guys are don't even know how to operate in that. It's almost like I, I, I'm busting my tail, and and it's like just nobody sees it, and and nobody cares. And I, what am I working for? What am I doing all this for? I, I'm, you know, screw it. I'm out. I'm gonna go. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm walking out, and I'm gonna go live in a cabin in Montana. You know, I'll just I'll live for myself now because nobody cares. And uh, and and so there there is a little bit of that going on in in society. And again. I don't think that that makes it a, an excuse for a guy to have a midlife crisis and you know tank the bank account for a new sports car or whatever. I don't think there's an excuse for the mistakes, um, but there's a lot of guys who do feel uh, disrespected, like their their spouse just doesn't see it, doesn't value what they bring to the table and what they're trying so hard to bring. What to they're the table. trying to do. So what it, they're trying to bring to it the kinda, table. It kind of goes back to the um, not knowing your love, your spouse's love language, and you're doing your love language. Yeah, and you're and you're doing all this work, but it, no one's really appreciating it, right? Yeah. So, and that's actually a good word, appreciate. Like a guy wants to be appreciated sure. for, for what he is and what he does, right? Yeah. So, what are some ways that um, your wife can appreciate you, can show respect to you? Um, what, what are some things that she can do? What? Well, one of my one of my love languages is is words of affirmation. I need to. I I do need to hear. You know, okay, I'm on the right track. You know, uh, so when when people when when my wife can say something to me that helps me to f- to 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 feel like, okay, I I am doing a good job taking care of the family. I I am supporting the way I should. Like something, uh, those words that just help me to to continue on to the next day. 
Um, it's it's things like, um, hey, I I noticed how you're uh, dealing with the situation over here. I, I think you've really grown in that area. Um, uh, periodically, my wife will say something like. Um, you know, I, whenever I'm feeling, you know, down or bummed or whatever about some deal or some ministry thing or whatever, um, she has, uh, and this is not like a constant cause if it's constant, then it loses its meaning. But periodically she'll say things like, yeah, but if you think back to who you were 15 years ago and what you were doing and how you were doing it, like you've grown so much. Do you have any idea how far you've come? You know, those kinds of things are the things that boost me to the next day, to the next week, to the next month. And makes you love your wife more. Right. And I'm like, you are my, like, you're my woman. Like, it, it, okay. ding, ding, ding. Like, not my, it's not a possession thing. Okay. Uh, you got to be all careful, blah, blah, blah. Um, but like, this is my woman. This is my wife. And, and this is why I fight for you because, because you respect what I'm doing. And again, it, whenever you put the two, the two sides of it together, the love and respect, when both of us are coming at it and doing that together, we both feel the same way toward each other. More love, more love. She'll look at me and say that that's my man, you know, kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, I think love and respect is a great way to, to walk through it. And again, that it's a, it's a somewhat, uh, generalized thing. Um, but yeah, there's 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 a biblical precedent for that. There's um, you know books on that. Uh, I lost the author on love and respect, but I mean there, there are books on that. It's um, yeah, I, I'll look it up. We can we can plug that it's in there, it's in this room it's, somewhere. Yeah, it's, I've got it in my <laughs> in my house too. But uh, yeah, I think those are two good ways to go about it. So, you know, so Jasmine uh, online is asking what are some oh. what are some examples of what guys bring to the table that are received with apathy. Um, how about, it's, how about, how about you mentioned working, you know, for the family, Yeah, working for the family, going to a job you might not really like or enjoy, but you're, you know, it's, it, 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 whenever you're, whenever you're sitting in, when I'm sitting in an office and I'm sitting across from a husband and a wife who are, are struggling to make it through and get to the next level and they both start talking the, the interesting thing that ends up being said is that you can hear the selfishness in both of them. Both of them feel like they're not getting something. Right. So they're, 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 it feels like this kind of selfish aspect, but what, where that's coming from is that the, uh, that each one has failed to, in some ways, fill the other's tank in this kind of love language, love and respect kind of a thing. And, and a lot of what, a lot of what is, is draining the guy, what feels like apathy, what feels like disrespect, um, what feels like what I am doing and desperately trying to do is not valued. A lot of times is the work. Uh, a, a a guy will a guy will put himself through almost anything to to support his family. A mature man will do almost will do will do whatever grunt work he has to do just to get by. I mean, there there's times when I've said that. Listen, if 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 all else fails and all hell breaks loose over here, I I will be an insurance salesman. Whatever, and that's not a knock on salesman. That's just from where I'm at. I mean, I, I will do whatever. I will work construction. Mickey I will D's. I will go to McDonald's. I will work at Home Depot. I will do whatever it takes to make sure that my wife and my kids are fed. Now, what ends up happening and what feels like apathy, disrespect, or devaluing of that is when when a wife looks around, and, and what can be too easy, and again, this is kind of a Nova thing, but what can be too easy is to see the big house on the corner over there, or that really nice BMW that, that my neighbor Stacy just came home in, or whatever, and then the, the, the thought process to the husband is, well, well, how come we don't, when can we get a new BMW? When, when are we going to get the bigger house? Well, do you know how much I'm working right now? We're strapped. Have you seen the but like? And then all of a sudden, there's this pressure on the guy of like, I I just can't do enough, and I I can't I can't get to that level. Stop! To, stop right there. That was perfect. That that's what I'm talking about. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I can't do enough. I just can't do enough. Yeah. That I I feel like that right there it distills the whole thing. The idea. And, and I mean, again, wife or husband can have that feeling, but husband, sure. husbands have that feeling. The ones that are on, on their way out in the relationship is I just can't do enough for her. Yeah. It's never good enough. It's never enough. The, when, when I'm counseling the couple that's having these discussions, you can almost always tell when he's at that point. And even if the work thing is not the example, you can tell when they're at the point because the wife has this list 
of jig, 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 and the guy is sitting silently. And when the guy is silent, he, I can't do enough. I've given up the will to fight. I can't, I can't win. It's a losing battle. I can't win this thing. They, they give up the will to even continue on. Well, and then when I come home, I need to talk to him. He won't even talk to me. Well, that's because you've berated him to the point that he doesn't think he's even valuable enough to even come. He doesn't want to come. I'm telling you, he doesn't want to come home. This doesn't happen overnight. No, 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 no. This what we yeah. what we touched on earlier was this res, this resentment is stored up. This is yes. over years of time now, yes. and this is what relationship. This is what happens to relationships where when they don't do the premarital, when they don't go to counseling, yeah, when they don't communicate really communicate with each they, other. They can get there, yeah. They get to this place where the argument is already lost before they even had a conversation. Yeah. The conversation is done because they're bringing in their this baggage into that conversation. So you, you're talking to people who maybe are at this point. What do you do? Right. What do, you, what do you, t- you tell them, stop? Okay, wait a minute. Before we can even go on, what needs to happen? They're both bringing all this resentment and baggage. What do you say right off? What, what do they need to do before they can even go on to the next step? Well, before we get to that, um, your, your wife said, wives definitely can feel that way too. Um, and, and, that's, and that's absolutely true. Uh, and, and that, it's absolutely true. Where, where when, the, when the husband is not, is not supporting and, and coming to, to love his wife the way she needs to, to feel it, she can get to the same place of, I can't do enough of this guy. Exactly. I, I mean, they, this, is, this is a two-way street, and this is, this is why the topic of marriage is, always seems to be such a difficult one or so tense to some degree is because it's always like, yeah, but, yeah, but what about my side? Yeah, but what? And it is both. It it is a both and on this front. The wife can get to that point too. The husband definitely gets to that point too. Like it 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 can just be it can just be there. You just an- so- you just answered it right there. So the thing that you when you say stop 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 we can't even go on. The next the next thing is you guys aren't even on the same team. You guys are on two different teams looking out for number one. Yeah, that that can happen. Well, yeah. isn't isn't that yeah. the, isn't that the case when she's got the long list or he's got the long list and and both people are saying I j- th- nothing's good enough or whatever after after years of saying to the other what I really need is and not getting it it goes on to the list and eventually that resentment builds up and now you're at this point of like okay it it's not going anywhere now what do we do and that's I think that was the question you were asking that's my question when you get to the end of that rope kind of a thing. Um, this is the part where it requires some pretty significant humility, I think, um, to admit that you don't have it all together and uh, you're broken. I believe that human beings are broken. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> what do you mean they're broken? Uh, we're, I got we're, a bad. I got a bad knee. You mean my bad knee? Yeah, yeah, that too. Um, we we're, we're broken from from birth. We we're, we're messed up. You, you can, you can look around at our world right now and you can just see that things are off, that things are broken, that humanity is a mess. <clears throat> um, there is something broken inside of us and everybody is looking to fill that brokenness, to heal that brokenness with something. And, and a, a lot of, okay, here's it. A lot of people come into the marriage and they, they, they fall prey to cultural nonsense that there is going to be a marriage and the fairy tale of when Cinderella and the prince pull away, the sign says, and they lived happily ever after. And they come into the marriage thinking that that other person is going to fill them. And when they realize three years in that they married a broken person who's just as screwed up as they are, and need, then all of a sudden, then, then the whole worldview collapses, right? So everybody's bringing junk. Every, each the husband and wife, everybody's bringing junk to the table. I'm bringing brokenness. I'm bringing what I call sin. I'm bringing sin to the table. Uh, uh, you're, you're bringing past pain, baggage, um, childhood issues. We're all bringing our brokenness into the table. Okay, so I, that's what I'm talking about whenever I say broken. Mm, yeah. Okay? okay. That makes a lot of sense. I think to the to the listeners and viewers, the everyone comes to the relationship with what you call garbage. And I, and, and you know that I'm a visual guy, how cool, or at least how to the point would it be if you, you actually brought all your stuff, like if somehow you could distill it, maybe on like three, 
three by five cards or something. Write down all the stuff, negative stuff that you're bringing to the marriage, yeah. and both of you dump it on a table and yeah. say, "Look, this is what I'm bringing the marriage. You still want to be marry me? Are you still you still in?" <laughs> well, and that's part of what premarital covers, like the the couple that I just uh, married uh, a week and a half ago. So part of the things that we went through with, in that book was we walked through um, some of their past stuff, the way their families do traditions, the way their families do holidays, the way that their parents handled money so that we can deal with the junk that's coming into the marriage up front as opposed to three years in when all of a sudden you're like, wait, who in the world did I... Who is this person? Who is this person? Why did I marry you? You can't even write a check, you know, yeah. like a balance a checkbook. What's the deal? Yeah, right. Um You've, so, heard, you've heard that one, I, I assume. Well, I was that one. I didn't, <laughs> know, that... I didn't know how to write a check when I got married, uh, when I got to college. Um, so, okay, so going back to your question, what are you supposed to do? Um, I think the, I, the answer I would give two people sitting across from me is that they need to show, uh, they need to, there, there's a story where a guy talks about basically um, there's wisdom in, in just taking five minutes. Don't say anything. Just take five minutes and just sit for just, just, just catch your breath. Don't make it worse, kind of a thing. Don't just jump in. Let's let's catch our breath. Then let's humble ourselves a little bit, and let's walk into a counselor's office. Let's get some help. Let's actually like intentionally with some effort go after this again. Back to the investment point. If you make an investment there, you are going to value it more. There, there's a reason why a lot of kind of free things don't always work because people don't make an investment so it doesn't really matter that much but when all of a sudden you're investing in your kid's future suddenly there's value there when you go to the counselor with your spouse and you're getting professional advice and you're investing money you know to to be there and you're investing that time intentional time energy money whatever to make that happen suddenly the spouse becomes can become valuable again that's very scary to a lot of listeners right now that some 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 people on, maybe do, do not want to go to a counselor because they feel like a couple of reasons. But one, they feel like if I go to a counselor, that's the death knell for this marriage. That that means yeah. we we failed in the marriage. Yeah. What do you say to that person that doesn't want to go because I of that? I, I would say that the if you if you are so arrogant to think that you don't have some baggage and brokenness that you brought to the to the marriage that you shouldn't be working on i i would say that's what's killing the marriage but they're is, but they're but you got people that are like for lack of a better word they're do-it-yourselfers and they're like oh, I, I don't oh. i don't want to bring somebody right. else i feel like if i bring somebody else i failed what do you say to that, the the person that that is, that is like no i don't or i don't want to give this per this other person this third party right all my i don't want to go there so that you can tell them how bad of a person i am yeah. Can you can you allay some of these fears for them? Um, well, I mean, I can, <laughs> I can try. Um, like, what are some things that? Okay, you've been to counseling, right? Yeah, marriage counseling. Uh, no, I oh. go. I I go to a counselor for myself. Okay, I've been to a counselor. Okay, I go, I go now. So yeah. so, what types of thing? Why do you why do you see a counselor and 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 what's the experience like? Uh, so yeah, so the counselor that I go to, uh, the, the experience is. Um, well, first of all, it's 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 simple because it's just whatever it is that I need to talk about. It's whatever it is that I'm I'm bringing, uh, whatever junk I've got, and it's it's it, it's int- you have to find the counselor I think that's going to work for you. I mean, because there's definitely some personality things that can end up across the table that can make that not work. So you, it may take a little bit of time to find that. Um, but but a counselor is just going to help you walk through the stuff you're you're feeling and thinking, and, and what I think. I think maybe a lot of guys, especially I'll speak from the guy perspective because that's what I am. I'm a guy. The perspective for me before going to counseling was simply that, kind of like you were saying, I've got to handle this thing myself. I don't really want to. I don't want to dive into the feelings. I don't want to dive into what I'm what I'm feeling on the inside. I just want to fix it. Just give me the list and let me fix it. Where's the five step thing? Where's the whatever? Right. So it. That's why I said. That's why I said if I'm sitting across the table from a couple, my first piece of advice is to find some humility because you have to humble yourself a little bit to say, we need some help. What's the counselor bringing to the table? 
Um, he's uh, he or she uh, he or she is bringing uh, just this an outside perspective. They're first of all they're bringing some professional insight, but they're bringing an outside perspective. They're bringing to the table what it is that the two of you can't see anymore. Because the if we just go back to where we were at earlier, the, the guy is so is so silent now because he's tired of fighting the battle and she's got her list and each each of them are in their corner that they can't they can't see the middle anymore. They can't see what it was that they brought to the table three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago that brought them together in the first place. It just feels like I'm not with the right person. It it, it they they can't see that. So their so their vision is myopic and they can, they, can they, absolutely get there, yeah. They can't even see they can't see clearly what the situation actually is. Yeah. And and they can't see they can't see anymore the damage that they are causing to the marriage even though what they're doing they think is going to help. And and they they can't see it anymore. And so what the what the counselor brings to the table is somebody who can sit there, hear both sides and help them begin to walk back to the middle and say, "Okay, well here, I mean, I definitely I can see where you're coming from." But uh, here's where here's where she's coming from, and let's kind of and they can help you create the path to to walk back to that center place. You guys are lost in the woods, and yeah, you guys can't see. You don't have any signposts. Another thing a counselor brings is, as long as you're not you know spending five dollars on the counselor, you know yeah. what I mean? Like so, you know, uh, uh, Jack's uh, Jack's Emporium for Good Marriages. Don't go to that guy. <laughs> if, if you're if you're going to a reputable counselor, that person's bringing years of experience yep, and yep. and knowledge on how to make the relationship, how to make a strong relationship, a right relationship, and then they personalize it for you and your spouse. Yes, yes. As opposed to you write you 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 write a book and then maybe maybe you're looking at it's like when people read the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that atheists say to me, Eric. A lot is. <laughs> I didn't do it, Eric. It was not me. <laughs> I throw them under all kinds of buses, but um, <laughs> you're you right back there. <laughs> but, but one thing, one thing that uh, one thing that they say about the Bible, people go, "Oh man, there's so many different interpretations, and mm. everybody's interpretation is valid." And it's like, well, in a marriage, your interpretation of your marriage is actually may not actually be all that valid. This person you're paying to see and invest time with. Is coming with the the skill set and the knowledge and the experience of what where you need to go. Yeah. And now they're listening to your stories, they're listening to your whatever, and they're going, okay, based on what you guys told me, this is really what needs to happen. Yeah. And yep. the, the work doesn't end there, right? You go, okay, cool. We have the answer, or we have a direction in, in which we can make our marriage. Uh, a happy one yep. and a fulfilling one, and now it's on you after you leave the counselor office to actually, to actually put in the work. Put to in do the work. What, and uh, Barb actually brought up a good point on the on the thread here on Facebook um, that that the uh, the professional impartial party is really important mm. because what what does happen, what tends to happen is, and this this is actually I've. The the funny joke, the funny ongoing joke for a long time used to really be that the that a bunch of women would get together for lunch or tea or coffee or whatever, and they're all gossiping about their own lives and how bad it is and yada yada. While the man's out there just doing his job, you know, and it was like this weird like it, it made the women almost look bad. But what's really interesting is that men and women do that just alike. A guy can walk to the office. And badmouth his wife just as quickly yep. as the wife can walk off to her local Starbucks and 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 gripe and moan about her husband or or at work. Stan, or, or, this is I'm the so, I, this is sorry. the 21st century. They're, I know they're allowed to work now. They, oh, oh, I forgot. <laughs> That's true. They can go to their place, mm -hmm. their third place, their a sphere of influence. They can go over there and they can gripe about their marriage just as much as the guy can go to his place and gripe about his marriage. And most do. And most do. And they do, and they'll and 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 they think that somehow taking their junk to their friend Sally down the street is it, 
She's not impartial. Joe, Sally, Joe at the office is not impartial. Not only are they not impartial, but Sally and Joe are idiots. <laughs> Sally and Joe are idiots for getting involved in this. Like, this is a bad idea. They don't know how. They don't know about your. They're just oh. hearing all the bad stuff that you. Yes. So they have the myopic view they, that you. They have. have the same myopic view you've got. Yeah, exactly. They're not seeing this impartially. And then to make it worse, what makes it worse is that a lot of, a lot of what ends up happening is that suddenly. Suddenly, the husband is really good friends with Sally at work, who is open to hearing his stories about. Oh boy! And now you've got a serious problem because the husband has has walked out and had the conversation with a, with a woman, or the wife has walked out, and Joe down the street just seems to be so much more open than my husband. He'll listen. He listens when I let's and let's, and now you've got and, and now not only have you taken all the problems outside the marriage to people who are not professional cannot or not impartial cannot actually help you but now you've opened the door to emotional and and physical affairs and le, and so let's let's let everybody get your get your pens out if you're taking notes get your popcorn no 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 your <laughs> and get your pens put down the popcorn and get your notepad because <laughs> because I think a very good practice in marriage is two things. Do 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 not confi- confide mm. with somebody of the opposite sex. No, do not. Especially if they're sexy or think you're sexy. Right. Don't do it. <laughs> That's so true. Because so many marriages end because it all started out, oh man, Billy, Bobby, Stace, whatever name. Yep. He's so much he's so much better. He listens he, to my he things. He listens. Bobby Billy. She listens. She listens to me. She's the type of woman that She's who she's who I should be with. I I I, She's the kind of person I thought I married. I, like any other man or woman listening to this right now, we're all so susceptible yep. to that. That's an easy, bad road to go down. Oh, very bad. So very bad. Spare yourself. Spare yourself. It's the the amount of counseling, and I, I'm going to try not to use specific examples because I don't want to throw people under the bus. That would be really bad. Um, but the amount of times I've tried to counsel a couple to bring them back together, but there's already... The local team coach, who was so and so's best friend, is involved because well they've been listening to me for the last year. Oh, and now coach just broke up a marriage because ex hubby ex hubby now came home and coach was at his place for dinner, kind of a thing. Ooh, like it's not good, not good, not good. You can't you walk that path and it's going to be bad. So every single time. So let's say you're talking to somebody or a couple or whatever, some somebody in in the in the relationship who's already started down that road. And has that person? What do you? T- how do you tell them to like? Kind of. How do you break that off? You. I don't think that there's strong enough terms to try to get them to break that off. I can't express in strong enough words to tell you what a terrible, terrible idea this is, and how badly you have potentially damaged your your marriage. But but like, but specifically, let's say oh, let's, let's say Bob has been talking to whatever right, Sally. Right. What do you say to him? Like you just told him, dude. Bad idea, stop. And he goes, dude, she, I work with her. She's my friend. Da, da, da. Yeah. How He's on board, but he doesn't know what what to do in order. What does he do? What does he say to Sally the next day he, to stop that situation? He, he doesn't. He, 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 in the strongest terms he can, says, hey, Sally, this is, I can't talk to you anymore. It, it's a, I, this is not good. I'm, I'm done talking to you about this. Go back to your desk i'm going back to mine it we're we're not talking you you have to you have to cut it off like to an extreme level because everybody knows that once you take a step in a certain direction and then another and then another and once you get 10 steps down that path it's easier to just jump to the 10 because that's where we were before so if you keep the door with sally open at the office to do the chatting it's now it's easy to take step step 11 and step 12 that is going to break some people's hearts man not hearts but that that's there's some... you, but you have to do it. And now the question is, how much do you value your marriage? That, that comes back to a whole new topic of, of do you, it goes back to, to no-fault divorce and how people view their marriage and whether or not it's worth fighting for. There's a whole worldview thing that can come along with that discussion. But, I mean, it's, it's how much do you value your marriage? I, I would do, I, I've told people before, uh, job-wise, friends-wise, whatever, I have told people before, I made a covenant promise to one person. I didn't covenant promise a job. I didn't covenant promise a ministry. I didn't covenant promise my kids. I didn't covenant promise nothing. 
I didn't covenant promise, you know, Misty. I covenant promise to Misty. And so because of that, she's basically the, she is the number one relationship on this planet that I would fight for. Bigger than your kids. Big, bigger than my kids. People, I, people don't I realize would, that, but kids can get in the way of marriage too. One million percent. I would, I would every 10 times out of 10 will pick my wife over the kids. Now, if, if my boys were sitting here, they could tell you that because when they, when they have been disrespectful or said something out of turn as they're learning and being kids or whatever, I have, I have gotten them to the point where they know and understand that I, I don't even call them when I'm, when that kind of a situation has happened. I don't even say to them, don't talk to your mom that way. I say, don't talk to my wife like that. (laughs) Oh, that is, I I say, I don't, I don't even separate it. So don't talk to your mom because then that creates a separation. Well, she's over there. Just be nice to her. No, no, no. I've, I've told my boys, don't ever talk to my wife like that again. If you, if you have something you want to say, you can come over here and talk to me and you and I, we'll go out in the backyard. You, we took, can, it. We can, you took it to we, the streets, man. <laughs> we can tango out in the back if you want. We'll fight it out in the living room, whatever you want to do. But if you ever talk to my wife like that again, you, you are going to be in a bad place. That's like interesting you, how, how the difference in, in the term that you yeah, used, yeah. How, how much serious that just got. The, the, the seriousness level, it's amazing because my boys have gotten used to it, and they, they know, any, especially the boys, but they know once they even get near that path and my, my language twists, they know where they're at, and they, they immediately pull back. And, and my wife could tell you they, that they would immediately say, sorry, Mom, turn their direction to me, and we would continue, the, because they know. Like, you do not mess with that woman, because I made a promise to her. I didn't make a promise to you. Yeah, you happen to be here out of that relationship, <laughs> but I made the promise over here, so she comes first. If you ever talk to her like that again, you and I are going to go, and until you're much bigger than you are now, <laughs> that's a losing battle for you, <laughs> you know? And so my, my hope is, my hope is not to come across as some macho, I beat my kids down. My hope is to actually raise my son's um, with with a, a a worldview and a set of values that says my wife is worth it, my marriage is worth it, and if we want to combat the 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 divorce stuff that happens in the country, the the marriage issues in the country, we need to raise our kids to be able to say this marriage is worth it. It's worth me fighting for. Um, it's worth me going after. And again, this is this does not take into account any of the stuff that you prefaced, like abuse and things. That's a totally different discussion. That's that, not what we're talking that's about. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about two people who are together. They're just struggling or whatever. But my marriage is worth it. My I made a promise to my wife. I made a promise to my husband. I am going that way, and, and everybody else can go the wayside as long as we're, we're good. And so I, I think that that's key. And so my, my sons know uh, that's how I feel about it. And so hopefully that instills some 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 value for them and what a marriage is i want to let everybody know um that's watching this live right now please uh type in uh submit in your questions now we're getting to uh basically the close to the end of the podcast so if you guys have any (laughs) questions please uh go ahead and do that now um let me ask you this since since you brought you know told a nice story about your kid (laughs) your kids I, they're not that bad all the time. No, first of I, all, they, I know, they, I know. a couple of times as they're learning, you, they say things I correct. The reason why <laughs> the reason why they're not that bad, I dare say, is because you take immediate uh, action. It, absolutely, it, it, it when when they mess with my wife, it is a imme- There is an immediate response. I mean, it they know uh, it, it's happened just enough times that they know they don't even walk that path. So we so. we talked about cancers versus colds. Uh huh. There's a cancer. You see it, right? Mm. You see the cancer. Your wife or your husband's doing something that mm. is a cancer. Yep. Now, my next question, I have two questions. My next question after this is going to be, how do you bring that up in a way that's not going to end in a fight and oh. basically get down the right road? But before that, the question is, what are some examples of cancers in a marriage? Oh, well, I mean, I think we were just talking about one. I mean, we've, we're talking about a couple. Uh, a cancer in a marriage would definitely be if it came to the surface that the husband was talking to a lady at work about the marriage. Possible infidelity. Possible possible infidelity. That's the, a big the, one. Uh, uh, there, that is absolutely uh, a cancer. That You have to stop that now. It has to end. That has to be cut out. What, what, whatever means necessary, that cannot happen. What else? 
Uh, I think uh, the other one we were touching on is the thing with the kids. Whenever you begin to see that the kids become the 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 lowercase g, the God in the relationship or in the home, that everything revolves around them, and then the marriage goes to the wayside. What what's actually happening now? What we what we see is that that parents, um, a husband and wife, are raising this their kids as if the kids are the ultimate, and so they they the the however it works out, they're both kind of off doing their own thing, trying to bring in the, the money to do all of the travel and all of the sports and all of the whatever to give the kid everything that they need. And they do that for two, three kids, 18 years per kid. So you're talking span of, what, 22, 24 years, 25 years, depending upon the age gaps. You're talking about a span of 25 years. If you get married at 25, we'll say 30, if you get married at 30, you start having kids by 32 because the clock's ticking. So you start at 32, and now you've got 25 years worth of parenting invested into this. You're 57, right? Is my math right, 57? You're looking at the wrong guy. <laughs> Not a math guy. You're about 57 you're, you're in your you're, 50s. You're, you're, you're mid-50s, right? Yeah. And then your kids go off to college, and they leave. And you're like, crap, oh yeah, I got a marriage. And, 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 oh. and we're seeing a lot of people at that age now get divorced as soon as they hit the empty nest because they, who is that person? How long have you been here? They Do, stay together for the kids. They stay together for the kids. Well, we're just going to, we're going to try to get through this for the kids as if there's some sort of a, a, you know, sacrificial martyr in the scenario. And it just sets the whole thing up for failure. But that's another cancer is as soon as you see the tendency of one of the spouses, or if both kind of identify it in the other, that the child is actually the one leading the show, that you that's got to stop. It what, has to. What you're you're going to go to a bad place. What are, what are some signs that that's happening? <clears throat> uh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yeah, I brought, um, you, I brought you on here to think, Stan. <clears throat> yeah. I need you to think. Well, part of the problem is I... <laughs> and not to like... Quickly, come on. Throw anybody under the bus. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think... I think any time that the that the husband and wife fail, like when communication starts to break down between the two, or the two are seeing different preferable futures as a result of what the what the kids are, are doing, that that can become a problem. So, for instance, I'll I'll pick on the guy that the the guy is so invested in his kids' sports that he cannot see what's happening in the marriage, and the wife being the the hero in, in the story she realizes what's happening um that 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 the husband has stopped all all of his extra time goes to the kids every penny of extra resource goes to the kids travel sport the kids jersey the kids equipment the, whatever the thing is and and the the wife begins to see that there's just no there's no space for her mm. in the relationship. It's mm -hmm. all about dad and the sports, dad and the kid, whatever. Right. <clears throat> I'll use it that way, but it can go it can go either way, right? Um, so that can be a sign whenever one of them just realizes this person doesn't even know I'm still here anymore. If you start talking roommate language, what's roommate language? Um, roommate language is. Um, Hey, how are you today? On the way by, while you're each doing your own things, and then at the end of you know a month, six months, a year, whatever, whenever you start to just feel like I don't even know who this person is in my bed, that you're a roommate now because there's no connection. Right. And you're so living in the same house. You're home. just living in the same home, but there's not there's no there's no real connection. And now you get back to physical touch, and all of a sudden that intimacy intimacy side is completely gone. There is, no sex is happening. That that's out the window because. Well, maybe little Jimmy's actually sleeping between you two. Ooh, you know, yeah. And now, now the kid has taken precedence. So if, even in a situation like that, now you can't even connect with your spouse because literally the kids are in the bed in between you. And or then you, and then nature. you try to kick little Jimmy out. Oh, and, and, and then the spouse is like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. little Jimmy yeah. sleeps with L us." Little Jimmy stays right here. And that, it, once the kids start to be the divide between the two, and the two are on opposite sides, it can become a thing. It can become a cancer. Can can I and can I say to you? guys listening that um people think that they're doing something wrong when the when the when the child is not the center of the relationship but you 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 got to look at it from the child's perspective did you really want your parents to fight over you you know to have problems 
because of you. I mean, like, that's the thing. They, it's not your fault. We didn't leave. It's not their fault because they didn't ask for that. They don't right. want that. Right, right, the right. kid does not want mom and dad to have a terrible relationship. Right. Meanwhile, they have a great relationship with the kid. Yeah. The kid actually wants, even if they can't say it themselves or articulate it, the kid actually wants their parents to have a great relationship. Yeah. First. They, they need it. They, they crave the stability of that. Right. Kids, kids, kids crave it, whether we want to or not. Uh, they just do. They just, uh, Jasmine asked, what are some strategies to overcome little differences that have the potential of becoming bigger issues. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of something that's little, but has the potential. Um, I think, I don't know about, well, I guess if, if I had a good example, we could talk about that. One of the things I would speak to on that before it even becomes a little issue is that actually that guardrails and boundaries are put in place ahead of time. Hello. So that you a little don't, pre-planning. So that you don't even get there. So for instance, um, back to the why is he talking to her at work? Why is she talking to him at work thing? Um, my wife and I have um, have had a rule in our marriage for a very long time, um, ever since I, I think ever since we said I do. Um, we do not... I have friends who are female that are not my wife. I do not hang out with any of them. You have girlfriends? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Females that are, <laughs> I, I just love how uh, guys have to be so care- careful. I have friends that are not that, uh, ma- male <laughs> guys. You mean girlfriends? Um, <laughs> no, no friends, but they're girls. Yeah, not girlfriends though. They might as well have um, balls. It- <laughs> it's basically we're just talking hockey. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Oh, how about the caps? You know, I don't know that kind of thing. Um, so, so part of the overcoming it is, is trying to be ahead of it before it happens. So the guardrail for us, for instance, one of them is just simply, I don't hang out with women. I, I just don't. Exclusively. I don't. Exclusively. I, I don't. If I have to have a meeting with somebody who, with a, with a woman who is in a ministry around me or works with me or whatever, there is no private office time. There's no, Hey, let's meet at Starbucks and just chat over coffee. I don't do I don't get in a car with a woman. So pe- now people will think, oh, that's so weird. Well, if you have to, if you have a flat tire, oh, whatever. Okay, there's probably some extreme cases. Or- I, I do a, not plan. He has, to- a, he has a dash cam. He, he has on him at all times. <laughs> See, honey, I'm I- living constantly. Yeah. See, I'm okay. <laughs> We're not doing um, anything. <laughs> and now what? Now here's what's interesting. A lot of people would hear stuff like that, like a boundary like that, and they would go, "Oh, well, that's so restrictive. I need my freedom." Or they would want to gripe the other side of that. I would argue that I have far more freedom than they do walking that path because now they're hiding all kinds of stories and secrets and issues. They can't tell their wife. They, they or can't husband. tell. They can't tell anybody what they're doing. So now they're harboring all these secrets. It's all hidden. It's all quiet. And now they are becoming trapped in their own story. And and I'm living perfectly free because my wife never. When I tell my wife, "Hey, I need to go have this meeting," or "I need to go do this thing in the evening," or "I need to go," she never questions. That I'm, I'm just, I'm going off to hang out with some other woman because we have put the boundaries in place that that's just not even, that's not even an option. It's not a thing. Not a thing. It's just, we, it, and it, and I've never given her the reason to think it will be a thing. And so we we've created. So now both. You mean of she us, doesn't just trust you? Just trust me. <laughs> I'm live tonight, so I, you know, I had to be, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, we, but we ha- both of us have that. She's not hanging out with guys. You know, I've never, I've never found her at at, at a Starbucks with a guy. I've never found like that doesn't happen. And when you have the boundaries in place, you don't even have something to overcome because you've put things in place ahead of time. Um, you're, I, you're, if Jasmine gives me like a specific, like a, I'd love a example. Hey, there Jasmine, to try give, to build off of. Give us a specific uh, uh, strategies sp- to overcome little differences that have the potential. Yeah, what little differences, uh, Jasmine? Give us little differences, and then uh, we can talk about specifically. Yeah, like a little difference, like clothes on the floor by the hamper, or little differences like road rage. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I hate it when my wife has road rage. She gets me in all Ta- kinds of. Tanya fights. is so angry. She's an angry person. She's an angry driver. <laughs> I hope she's still watching. <laughs> oh, look, 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 speaking of Tanya, she said, good point, babe. See, that's that words of affirmation. She's learning. She's look learning. Look at her backing you up. That's right. Oh, uh, so, so nice. So so that's one. That's one, right? Uh, well, that's two sure. we just talked about. I, I think those are huge. Those are huge. Money is mo- another one. Money can be one. How you spend your money as a couple. I, yeah. Is there such a thing as private money? Well, it, it, every couple has to determine that. That's actually something that we go through in premarital. We... we I will have a couple wrestle through whether or not they're going to do the money that way, or they're going to do their own, or they're going to have a united or you know joint checking or however they're going to do it. Yeah, I I recommend that 
Joint checking. I recommend it. All all the money coming together. Because if there's ever if there's ever an issue or a concern and you don't know where the money's going and then you become suspicious, now you if you ever become suspicious about anything or they give you a reason to suspect that something's going on, and now you can't see half the income that they're bringing in at the same time, it becomes way too easy to build that story up in your mind, and that cre- that can create a major issue. Ooh, I love that the story, <clears throat> the story in your mind. I, I sure another, another way to put that is. You're writing the you're writing the the the, the play right. or the movie right, and you're <laughs> this is a Patrice thing. Sorry, it, he pops in every episode. I swear, but he goes the pro, uh, one of the problems is he or she write uh, they write they they act uh, uh, they they're you they're them they're the other person they create they write the story in their head yeah they they're in control when you are. Writing the so the story mm-hmm. of how Stan, like let's say I'm Misty, I have a beard, but yeah, pr- try that to pretend. got interesting. Yeah, that ugh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Misty's v- very beautiful, and I am not, but pr- try to do it. Um, <laughs> and I'm sitting here looking at you, and I go, um, I'm gonna, I'm going to not try to get your, um, not trying. I'm not going to try to get your word on anything. I'm going to assume everything. I'm going to put words in your mouth. I'm going to write the scenario. I'm going to I'm going to write the story about you and it's all coming from me, my head. This is a way not not just the oh there should be trust. There should be mutual love and respect da, da, da. Right. but you're you're putting in guardrails so that you're helping their story be more accurate. Right. So that they that you are at such a level, going f- above and beyond, to the point where, look, honey, I love you so much that I'm going to do things that are not even that. E- what's the word? Um, uh, 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 there's a word I'm looking for. It, it's not um, not accurate. Um, something that's not. Uh, um, crap! I always have a brain fart too every episode. Um, <laughs> It's not convenient. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. I'm going to go outside of my convenience because it's not convenient to not be able to have a meeting right. with the opposite sex. It's not convenient to not ride in a car with the opposite sex. Can, it can be at times for sure. It's like, we just need to make it a run, you know, and whatever. No, I can't do that. And it's weird to people nowadays. They look at you and go, oh, kind of weird. Yeah. What kind well, of? That's so backwards. Yeah, you are. Ugh. What's wrong with you? Christians. Well, that's probably true, too. <laughs> yeah, that is us a little bit, though. Uh, Gar- Christian, Christians could be just as messed up in that, but Erica says two accounts breed sec- secrecy. That we, yeah, and, and they can now. Um, again, a, a a married couple can decide to do it however they want to do it, but the per- again the purpose of the premarital side is to try to put things in place ahead of time. Okay, so now what happens if, or you try to set them up to be able to work through? But Stan, Pastor Stan, that would never happen. She would never do. He would never do that. Right. That's because you're not married yet. You're still. It, it's still the 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 hearts in the eyes, the puppy dog glove, the the romance, all the stuff is still there. Nothing is faded. You guys and are then, white but, belts. Yep. You guys are and, white belts. And then ev- eventually, you're going to be three years, five years, ten years down the road, and it's not. It's not the same. There is going to come a time when all that is really left beyond the romantic feelings of love is the commitment, the longevity, the work that it's going to take to maintain this relationship. And if the two of you are bringing any sort of and and that some of that can go back to baggage. If the if the if the wife uh, had been cheated on by previous boyfriends and she comes into this marriage and all of a sudden the husband's got a secret bank account because he wants to go hang with the boys on the weekend. Oh, we're just going to go hang out at Vegas this weekend. Yeah. And she's been cheated on in the past. All of a sudden, that story builds up in the mind, and it beco- it becomes the cancer, which is where I think this conversation started, the cold and the cancer thing. Um, th- that can become a cancer for their relationship. That can become... A, you can't... I don't want you to go to Vegas. And now all of a sudden, what's the problem? The problem is, well, she just doesn't want me to have a good time. She doesn't want me to hang out with the guys. And her problem is, well, I, I, I don't know. I've, I've just been... 
I mean, I've been cheated on. I've I've been I've gone used. down this road. I've been down this road, and I don't want to go. And back I don't want to. I don't want to go back down it again. I've I married you. I'm invested in you, and now you've got again the, the these two sides. Now, in that scenario, I would counsel every single guy to whatever it takes. You give up whatever that thing is, so you can be united with your wife. So for what that's worth, I would be counseling the guy in that direction. Did you, have you ever listened to it re- very quickly? And I'm going to get back to you, Jasmine, because you, you, Oh, you, did she give us one specific, but have you ever listened to Jocko Willink's podcast? I love Jocko. You love Jocko? Dude, Jocko, dude, shout out to Jocko. Jocko, if, if you're ever in the DC area, man, I, I would, I would do whatever to get lunch with you. I love Jocko, me, man. I would get whatever that, just just to I, do a podcast dude, with you, dude. That, me too, man. Like I'd love to get him on the show. I, I the um uh Extreme Ownership, amazing book, and then um I haven't gotten it yet, but I need it. Discipline equals freedom. Do you have it yet? I don't have it, but I know I know what you're dude, talking about. Man. And I, I that's what I was going to mention. That's why I bring Jocko up because yes. Jocko yes. Jocko um was a Navy SEAL, a career Navy SEAL. Guy is absolutely a man's man, but he he has a podcast. He writes books about things that he learned as a SEAL. One of the things that he learned as a SEAL was that people think that to be truly free is mm. to not have any discipline, to be able to yes. do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. At ultimate a, freedom. Ultimate freedom is yeah. at a whim. Yes. What he uh, c- counters that with is, no, actually having discipline to, yeah. f- to follow through with something that's hard and not easy, going the, the not the easy, but the hard road. Right is actually freedom. And you 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 said it uh, perfectly where you said, "Hey, I have the discipline to do the things in my marriage like the guardrails. If I have that discipline, now I have the freedom. I can talk to my the wife about whatever." Them. Right. I don't have that secrecy where I have to, "Oh, wait, what, what lie did I tell her or him <laughs> that I have right. to keep going?" Which, which thing do I have to hold on to? That's now, not now freedom. I'm trapped. That's not freedom. That's now not I'm freedom. Tra- I'm trapped. So let yeah. me let me ask uh, Jasmine's question real quick here. Yeah, I'm uh, trying. I'm reading through it too. Go ahead, go for it. So something, Jasmine says something. The husband says that the wife doesn't agree with about it, intentions. When asked to give examples, he can't think of any. Then the question is whether there really isn't, or if he just doesn't want to say so, he doesn't dig himself deeper to speak. So basically being honest with your wife, I think that is. Yeah, in some ways, I, I think that's what she's getting at, too. Uh, the husband says that the wife, and something that the wife doesn't agree with, but it's about an intention, but the husband can't think of an example. Um, yeah, I mean, that can be tough, because depending upon... Um, there have been times I have said to my wife, like, hey, I, I really need this out from you to, to feel like we're still together. And she'll say, well, give me an example. And sometimes I'm like, I, um, I don't, I can't, I don't, I can't put my finger on. It. I don't know exactly what it is. I, it's just something I feel. It's something I can't. I don't, but I'm not sure what it is. So th- that's that's hard to know because there could be something. She could be totally right that there's something there that maybe he just does not want to get himself into a hole, and he realizes that once he's walked that path and opened the door, he's about to get buried. Okay, so let, or, let let's let's chunk that out then. Okay, the first issue, which would be. He doesn't. Let's say. Let's say that he is keeping something back because he's afraid of how she'll react. Oh well. How does he get to a place where he doesn't feel that sort of pressure or that anxiety over telling her exactly how he and, feels? And again, again, part of that comes back to uh, love languages, expectations, communication. Part of that comes down to uh, him. Number one, being willing to to say. Even if it is going to hurt him a little bit, he's got to he's got to bring it out. We got to talk about this, or it's just going to build up into a, a, a resentment wall. And then on the other side, from her perspective, it's got to be it's got to be the the sensitivity to the fact that he can't he he's not communicating it well. And so to give him the freedom to say, okay, here's the deal. I, I know you're trying to communicate something. I know you're struggling to get that out. What? I, I let me just remove any any sort of like defensiveness that you may sense coming off of me. Um, and and if, if you need some time, fine. If you want to plan a date to talk about it, fine. If you're ready to talk about it now, fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything. I just you just tell me what you're feeling. Like there's got to be a, it's that that sense of like kind of give and take again. Go ahead and tell me, and and I'm not gonna I will not respond. It's that give it five minutes, you know, kind of a thing. Um, and so sometimes that just has to be what it is. Don't respond to this. I just need to say it. 
I need to get it off my chest. I need to put it out there. It's just how I feel. It's not even going to come out right. I just need to put it out there. And so then, you know, once he puts it on the table and if she can come sort of to the middle to be able to say, okay, allow him to have that space. Now, once it's in the middle, now we make a plan. We come up with a, a plan or strategy to try to deal with that issue. Now, is, now if, you, if, if the communication is so bad you can't work through it together, now's the time to go and sit with that counselor. Now's the time to go and sit with... Now's the time to go and sit with the pastor because the pastor's free counseling. So go sit with the pastor right, right. and just put it in front of him. And and what what a trained, a well-trained pastor will do is help you from at least from a biblical perspective, work through it toward reconciliation and unity. And a really wise pastor will look at the situation if it gets above his head or her head, because that's some traditions, uh, his or her head, and they will say, I, I'm with you guys. I will love you and pray for you and whatever. Here's a list of counselors. Let me help you guys get to somebody that can actually help walk you through. Like there, Now there needs to be a plan to actually work through. So it's either the two of you working through it together, it's bringing somebody else in to help you work through it together, or whatever. But in an effort to help it go from being like a little thing that's in the middle before it gets really big, again, you, you want to allow as much safety as possible to put that thing in the middle. Let's communicate about it. Now it's in the open, so now we're going to talk about it, uh, and if we have to, we're going to go and get somebody to help us talk through it, and not the neighbor down the street. We're going to get <laughs> some... We're going to go get somebody to actually help us figure this thing out. I think... And I think a good... I don't know if that helps or not, but... And I, and I think a good strategy also would be maybe to um, cr- create an atmosphere, like excuse me, a, a, right. a specific atmosphere. So not just saying, Hey, you can, you can tell me anything and let's, let's get real with each other and honest, but actually creating an ambiance for that. So that may, oh. that might be like a date night, right? Where, right. Where we're going to go out, we're going to have a good time. We're going to, we're going to start this thing off right mm-hmm. so that we're both in a good place. Right. And you know what? The whole point of the date is so that we can be honest with each other and talk to each other yep. and have real conversations. Maybe if we're talking about the big stuff, maybe you guys need uh, a uh, consistent time every week, every month, every two weeks right. where you guys actually can be honest with each other and talk to each other. Yeah, And it's not just like in at the kitchen table and all this other stuff is, is it's, piling on. That It's hard to do. That is hard to do at home because... Um, it, it's just like sometimes trying to work from home is hard because there's all the, the distractions and stressors of what's going on at home anyway. Mom, mom, and mom, dad, that, dad, dad. There's that. And if all of the ugly conversations have happened here, one of the, the guy who did my premarital suggested one of his pieces of advice was, uh, or maybe it was in a book, I can't remember, don't fight in the bedroom. That's don't, a holy place, everybody. Don't, don't have a fight in the bedroom because then, <laughs> then you try to go to bed together. And to your point, the atmosphere is tense. You just you just spent three hours yelling at each other because you don't know about the money or what's your motive about this or why were you spending so much time with Sally at the office? Who's or, Sally? <laughs> who's Sally anyway? Uh-oh. Where where did Sally come from? If you're oh. listening and your name's Sally, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Um. I mean, but but then all of a sudden that environment is not conducive to it. So some of the things I will say, um, sometimes I'll say to my wife, "Hey, um, listen, I know you need time to process something. There's something going on with me. I need to I need to share it with you." Can we plan some time to do lunch and let me share some stuff? Tanya cannot pay attention like to the level. And I'm a guy. If you're not like eye contacting with me, I yeah. feel like you're not listening. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I know. I know, Tanya. I'm I'm a, I'm a I'm a child when it comes to that. <laughs> but that's just the way I am. And so we have our best conversations at the restaurant where it's just the two of us sitting across from each other. Yeah. Maybe that's what you need to. Maybe right. you need to stop having real conversations. When yeah. when there's a kid around or oh, there's stuff, yes. yeah, maybe yeah. maybe that's a bad time. Yeah, um, kids should see some healthy reconciliation stuff that happens, but they shouldn't see like the depths of the process. Probably they, there's some some stuff they probably shouldn't see. The point I was driving at with um, that date idea or the atmosphere idea getting out was that one of the things you don't want to do is plan the date. Set it up as some really fun thing. Hey, we're gonna go hang out at Top Golf or <laughs> something like that. And then while you're eating a cheeseburger at Top Golf, you drop some heavy thing, and all of a sudden they're blindsided. Whoa. What? Where did this come from? No, the, you know, the whole you, point of the date is to right. Real so you, conversation. you would want to set that up. You'd want to communicate that and say, "Hey, look, I've this is just something I got going on. I need to share. It. I need to talk about. It. I need to vent it. I need to whatever. We need to put it out there. Can we just set aside time to talk about that? Let's do lunch. 
We'll go to Panera. We'll go to wherever, and we're just going to have lunch. And we're just, but I just need to talk about it. that way. Everybody is aware of what's going on. The setup is right. The atmosphere is right. You're together, whatever. Um, but yeah, you don't want to spring something like that on somebody either. And then they're like, Wait, "Where's this coming from?" Right. You know. Right, so right. that was the other piece with that. But the very last thing I'd like to talk about before we wrap this up, I am, is that there's a uh, verse, yeah, about being equally yoked. <laughs> not yolks. Oh, it's not about. It's not about eggs. There's so many good verses to talk about, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's and that's the one you're going with. What, really? You don't like that one? I do, but man, it's like there's some heavy. Why do? Go for it. Go for it. Now, why? You, why no, do you, you? You just go. Ahead. Why do you think I'm ending I'm with just, that? Uh, I'm, yeah, I know. I. It's you. called a cliffhanger, my friend. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Go All for right. it. So. So there's a verse that says that the two should be equally yoked. Yep. The idea behind equally yoked. Can you explain that as the professional oh boy. church guy here? <clears throat> sure. Uh, so the, the, the basic idea, the basic idea behind that is simply that uh, you should you should strive to marry somebody who has similar values, similar beliefs as you, so that you are together from foundational elements. You should be equally yoked with that with and that where, person. And what is, what is that yoke? Where does that come from? Uh, the idea comes from oxen who are yoked together to plow a field to work together toward you know to to get a job done. Okay, so, so it's so the, the idea of so the yoke is that big wooden thing around both of their necks, right? So the idea is this: <laughs> if you if you were to try to plow your field, okay, I said that for some reason I said plow your field like. Uh, What's the Asian dude? The gay Asian I, dude from uh, uh, from from Star Star Trek? Oh, oh, uh, uh, George Takai. I was like, when well, you're equally yoked. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really said that weird. Sorry, but, well, that was funny. But but when you try to plow your field, if you were to try to plow your field with two oxen, mm-hmm. and you don't yoke them together, right? You are going to have one going one way, one going the other, and next yeah. thing you know, you got a broken plow or yeah. something. You know, yeah, it ain't going to work because right. if they don't have, if they're not alignment, alignment together, yep. you're not you're not going to go in the same direction. Yep. So that's the that's the idea. That's the con- context behind that. So yeah. equally yoked, being you and your spouse are both uh, yoked together, connected, and going in the same direction. Right now, the question is. What happens? What is that direction? Oh, okay. Yeah. What is that direction? Now, for me and my wife, that direction is God, mm-hmm. right? That's the ultimate purpose. So, so if we were to put it into a hierarchy, right? Right. It would be uh, work, friends, family, each other, right? Mm-hmm. And then God, right? God would be the top of that. Mm-hmm. That gives us a clear direction. So whenever we have a pro- a gameplay problem, like I don't agree on this game plan, I don't agree on that, you know, whatever. Right. We go. We have a sort of a a, 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 a yoke right. that that brings us together, and a destination that brings us together in the same path. Okay. Right. Can you can you can you speak about that? Like as far as like why would what are some reasons why you think people should uh-huh. be equally yoked? Um, in their marriage, obviously. Yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of times what happens is, uh, sometimes you view the person you're about to marry as, um, as a project more than, more than anything. And so (laughs) it's stereotypical, but you typically hear the woman say, I can change him. You know, I, I can, I can change him into this. And the guy probably thinks that to some degree too. Well, she'll, she'll be okay. You know, whatever. Um, or guys are shallow, and they it, marry they marry what they what they think, right? And and yep. then the and then the wife kind of changes over time. Yep. And then it's like, oh, you're not the same. So, yes. But yep. but but what was what was your the, whole point to marriage? Is the question. So for for me, the purpose of marriage is to help the other person become who God created them to be. So I'm with you on my my perspective from marriage is simply that 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 my wife and I are both striving to be who God's created us to be, and we're doing that together. So what ends up happening is if, if there's an unequal, uh, the unequal yoke, as the Bible talks about it, uh, where, where one is going one way, one's going the other, you're, you're naturally creating the setup for tension in the marriage. You're, 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 you're setting yourself up for failure. If you're not, if you're not wise about trying to bring the thing back into alignment, 
you can't you can't walk through marriage not in alignment and never feel the effects of that. If you're walking in marriage out of alignment, you will feel that and it will have consequences. Something is going to happen. Like it may not be catastrophic, but something is going to happen as a result of that. Um, so for me, the purpose of marriage is to help the other person become who God has created them to be. If I'm, if I'm married to a person who doesn't believe that at the same time, if I, if my wife doesn't believe that her part of her role in this marriage is to help me become who I need to be, then suddenly if the marriage becomes more about her, now, now we've got problems because there's no, we're, we're just, like you said, you're going two different directions. Um, Again, I don't. I don't know if that answers that very well. But what are you, it does? And what are some things that? Because let's say you're yoked together for this right. marriage. What are oh, some? Yeah. What are some things that people, instead of God, right? Instead of becoming the the people that God wants them to be in this marriage, what are the reasons for? What are what are the reasons uh, that they are think they're striving for? You know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, um, I think so. Uh, what you hear, I mean, I guess sometimes what I hear whenever I can tell, like, if a of, if a husband and wife are not working toward the same end is, it, it, it typically comes out in the things that, that they value and, and the things that they're talking about. And like so you, what? Well, again, it, it goes back to all the stuff we've been talking about. Some some people marry for money. You know, some people marry for um, for certain levels of of a fame or notoriety or certain people may marry for the kids to have a, to have a family, to have the family, American so dream, got, the American dream. I've got to have enough money to have the house with the white picket fence and the car in the driveway and the yada, yada. And I need three kids and I need a dog and I need a, and so they marry for some, that dream, that picture going forward. Yeah. So th- there can be things people marry for beyond, um, she's hot. She's hot. Yeah. She's hot. Yeah. I'm, she's marriage material. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. He's successful. He's successful. Or, or he's going to be one day. I believe it. Yep. Or I can change him. Yep. But then again, then again, it there they are looking at each other and then putting each other as the thing that as they're... yes. Wow. Yeah. But that that what you're saying is that is an, you're immediately putting your relationship into strain by doing that. Um well, yeah, I think you are. Eventually. Uh, yeah, I, I think eventually there's going to be some tension there because what happens when what happens when she's not hot? Okay? He's not successful. What happens when he loses his job and he's not successful? You can't what, you can't have kids. You can't Yes. Yes, and and there are some people who walk through infer- infertility really well, and there are some people that just destroys their marriage. It's done. It just re- it destroys them. Yeah. And if you went into it for that, and it gets pulled away, then well, then I wasn't in. It was not the right person. It's you can you can list the thing, the reasons why you shouldn't be there anymore. Um. So yeah, it could it could be it could be any it could be that. Yeah. So, what happens when when he when uh um. Uh, she she gets in a car accident, and now she can't quote perform wifely duties. Right. Or I mean, there's there's a whole host of things that can happen that when you've based your marriage on something that isn't lasting, that if they are pulled away from you, put immediately put the whole thing in jeopardy. So why God? Why 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 is putting God as the reason for the marriage? Why is that a good thing? Um, well, I mean, I would I would say that um, you know because. Well, because God is God. God is is eternal. He was here before. He will be here after. He designed marriage, so he knows how it works the best. If if you hold to the worldview that God created the universe, then God created time, then God created human interaction and relationship, which means God created marriage, he created all things. If he If he did that, then he knows the best way to go about it. He knows the best way to walk through reality in the absolute very best, most full. And so Jesus shows up, John 10, 10, I've come that you have life, have it to the full. Why does Jesus know how to have life to the full? Because he's God. He knows exactly what it looks like. Um, and so I would say that, that God is the is that eternal thing, uh, the eternal deity underneath it all, that if if everything else fails, if, if I get into a car accident and can't work, if... if uh, you know, well, we already have kids, so that tra- that thing's not there with infertility or whatever. But uh, I mean, if if tragedy strikes us, we have something beyond 
well, we just needed a bigger house. If we had just had the bigger house, we would have been happy. If we had just gotten our kids to this college, we would have been happy. If we had just gotten to... And, and whenever you set those kinds of earthly kind of goals, if you can't reach them, it's devastating to the relationship. But when you when, to me, when you set the foundation, it's something that is eternal and cannot be taken away. It doesn't matter what happens to me along the way. The purpose for the marriage still exists. It's to help my wife become who God wants her to be. And if she's... Uh, you know, if she's paralyzed in a car accident, God forbid, if something tragic happens, it doesn't change anything. It does not change why I'm with her, the purpose for it, the fact that I would stay with her, regardless of whatever happens, because the purpose was not, well, you just need to help me get to the next level, and well, if you can't help me do that, now I'm out, right? Exactly. And so so for me, the, the, the God part of that foundation is, for me, is... is I, I, I've talked to enough people over 15 years that, um, 18, 15, 16 years in ministry, I, I don't know how you do marriage without God. And people do it all they the do time. All, they're doing it all the time, all around us. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how they do it. They, it, it well, I don't... I, 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 <clears throat> let me say this. They do it all the time. They try to do it, try it. all yeah. the time. I shouldn't say they do yeah. it all the time. Because they're trying we, to do it. Because we're living in some of the worst divorce that this country's ever seen. Yeah. Why is that? You know, you got to, you got to ask, because again, when I talk to people, I try to hit people with logic. I'm, I'm, I'm all about logic. Does it, does it make logical sense? If, if I'm telling you, Hey, look, what's your marriage based on? Why are you married? That's my number one question. Why are you married? What's the point for sex? You can do that without getting married for kids. You can have kids without marriage. You can do a lot of things without marriage. You don't need to be married. What's the, what's the point? Why are you married? You know, and uh, so, so I, you know, I try not, I try not to be, um, uh, I try not to be so subjective because I understand there's people that don't have faith. Fine. But on a logical level, ask yourself these questions. Are you really living life to the fullest? Are you really living life in a logical way that will get you to a place where you want to be? Or, yeah, or are sure. you setting yourself up for failure? Sure. You know, if anything, hopefully you guys listening right now are watching, um, at, you know, asking yourself these hard questions. Don't faint away from the hard questions. Sure. Hit those questions hard on and find those answers for yourself. Um, for me, for Stan, God has been giving giving us the, the, the right way since we've been on this path. So that's why we're on this path. Um, yep. But definitely, we're not afraid to tell people, hey, look, ask your questions and try to figure this thing out. That's that's one thing that you need to be doing. Um, yeah. So thank you, Stan, for coming on the show, first of all. Again, yeah, man. this is Stan part two, by the way. Stan, <laughs> Stan was on the show before. You'll be on again. Um, one thing that uh, we had some wives on here saying, well, what about the female perspective? Look, yeah. Stands here. <laughs> I mean, it's, cl- it's as close as you're gonna get. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, missed. Well, you invited Misty. I did invite his wife to come on the show he as did, well. To be fair, he did invite Misty, and absolutely, we. You know, it's just one of those things where it was an evening thing. You right. got kids at home. Well, there was going to be school till the snow hit, but right. um, kids are at home and a dog and all that other life played out. Yeah, so that's whatever. tough. But so. we we got definitely need to figure that out. If if they if they want the wife perspective, yeah, they they can listen to my my wife and I did a podcast on my podcast. There recently. you go, we Stanrada dot com. Stan Rada, that's R O D D A dot com. Uh, yep, check it out. Um, so a lot of these questions, you guys... We, well, we just did an episode called Lessons Learned Over 18 Years of Marriage. And so we both just sit down, we just talk about them, things that we have learned together over time. And so if you are interested in that, uh, the wife perspective, uh, go go and listen to that, because my wife and I, we just have a conversation together, you know, in about 45 minutes or so, we just chat about our marriage and our, we tell our story and... We'll get so, that. Yeah. We'll get that linked up. Uh, I'll get the link for that, and cool. uh, so people can check that out as yeah. well. And yeah, definitely. Um, Stan is a again. He's a he's a pastor at uh, New Life Christian Church. Um, he he's got an outstanding haircut and beard. Um, he has <laughs> he has a podcast. I everybody do. and and it's uh it's who does your podcast reach like what's it for uh it's primarily it's it's a resource for ministry leaders uh, as is the primary but if you're if you're a, a pastor church leader uh, ministry leader volunteer 
Uh, it's primarily church ministry resources. There so we go. talk about all kinds of things, portable things, portable church stuff. and Right. So if yeah. you're if you're in that world, he's got a wealth of resource there. You're like on episode 200 or something? What are you, where are you at I right wish. now? I wish. No, I wish. Uh, I think uh, I'm recording this coming Friday will be episode 59. Yeah, you're doing well, man. So, you're doing well. Yeah. So uh, again, you can check out Stan, StanRada.com. Uh, your Facebook is Stan Rada. Stan Rada. Stan Twitter, Rada. Stan Rada. Instagram, Stan Rada. Not a whole lot of Stan Radas out there. You didn't not have to go through many. that. You're not going to have to look through a list to get there. You're going <laughs> to find it pretty quick. And definitely, definitely, uh, you know, send questions his way. I mean, th- we did the podcast today, Q and A. But if you have any other questions, please contact Stan. Stan is more than happy to, uh, you know, answer those questions as best as he can. I'm sure. I'll, I'll do my best. And then he'll he'll have uh, <laughs> he'll have Misty pinch it for well, him. I'll have uh, I'll have Misty edit the email. There you go. <laughs> And of course, guys, thank you uh, for watching Righteous Anger Podcast. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you, um, uh, if you can, please help us with uh, things like going on the website, RighteousAngerPodcast.com, going on to OnIt.com uh, through our links there on, the, on our website, and uh, try out some of these things. Go check it out. Look at the science behind what OnIt is doing. They've got human performance uh, supplements and things that that i use every day and it, and and it's been doing pretty well so i think it'll help you as well and again you'll be supporting the podcast go also go to epilogueshirts.com check out the stuff that we have there get some cool swag and again help the podcast out um i will shout out besides stanrider.com and of course stan's podcast there's also the fight game podcast so if you are a uh into the into the martial arts mma Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, uh, any of that in the fight game world, boxing. Um, we have a weekly podcast dedicated to the East Coast and what's going on here, uh, lessons learned, how to be a better fighter, promoter, um, all that. So, anyway, guys, thanks for listening. This was uh, podcast number 41, Stan Rodgers. Nice. Nice.